Hello everyone and welcome to episode 96 of Lost in Translation Mod. I'm May. And I'm Jay. Well, that was a lot with a lot of energy and excitement. And I'm Jay. And I'm Gatchmon. And this week we watched Darkest Before Duskmon. And I'm Jay. <laughs> Please just stick to the assigned script. <laughs> Fine. Also, total destruction of five fighters, terrifying Derek Pewer. I was wondering when the mispronouncing <laughs> was going to come in. And home again, Takuya returns. And my home A, Takuya's lonely return. Actually, it's or. It's not and, because it's or. Yeah. We also saw it. Yeah, we also saw it. So it's yeah. end. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. No, that's actually a good point. And on to Digi News. For Digi News this week, first of all, the Digimon Adventure Try Human and Chosen CD character songs were released, and that's that's pretty exciting. Great, awesome. On to the next thing. Mine haven't arrived yet, but they will, and it'll be exciting. My keep on uh, DVD and CD arrived though, and that's pretty hype. Also, a super cool Digimon watch is up to for pre-order. It's super cool. Jay thinks it's not cool. I think it's cool. Is it the Minerva watch? No, 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 no. An actual real watch. Well, I haven't seen it. To tell I, you I, it's I, not show, cool. I say, I say, I showed you I'm a photo. I'm almost certain it's not cool. And you said, "Oh, that's really lame." Oh yeah, well that sounds like me. Yeah, it's the the one with the Omega Mon on it. Did I even look at it before saying that? Yeah, or did I you showed. You send, I... Did you say look at this Digimon thing? And I just said, "Ah, oh, that's lame." No, I showed you on Saturday. Are you sure? Look. If you don't behave, I will show you at Mon Spoilers. Oh, that's really mean, honestly. Okay, here is the... Um... I have never seen... Oh, I did see that, and that is garbage. Yeah, so it's got a Mega Mon on it. It comes in black and white. It's that like... Is... It's really kind of cool. That is completely trash garbage. I like it. I want it, but... I'm... the bit On a big leather band that dwarfs the actual watch face. Ugh. It's uh, Bandai Premium. If you took that thing off the stupid leather band and gave it like an, a reasonable like metal wristband or something, it would look good. Like the non-official Digimon watches look quite they're, they're non-official ones and they look quite nice. But are they all uh, just Digivices? No. Like the one you have. That's no. A watch and a Digivice. No, but that's official. But it's cool though. It's not cool. Like that picture of me from the uh, like the concert in the, the Christmas concert when I was eight and I've got a Digimon watch on and a Che Guevara shirt. You mean the coolest picture of anyone of all time? <laughs> you going, woo! 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 Um, I wish you could see this. Woo! I'll, I'll upload a picture. <laughs> but They're... take that sound and assign it to that picture when you when you have to keep in your mind. Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's me. I think it was like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and I was Rudolph because no one liked me. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Another bit of Digi News is the first Atmon manga is being released next week. And this is a compilation of the chapters that have previously been released individually in V Jump. That's pretty exciting. So you don't if you wanted to read that, you don't have to buy like, you know, six issues of V Jump. You like a crazy person might. But I want to read like everything. Like a crazy person Look, I might. I want to read the ads as well because they're good for my Japanese. Like a crazy person. Speaking of Atmon, episode 26 of Atmon, which comes out tomorrow but also i guess if you're listening to this and it's edited it's already out and it's a recap episode if it's full-on recap i'm not watching it it's got it's got new dialogue what does that mean i don't know I, I, well, who said it had new dialogue if you don't want to cover it i'll cover it by myself but yeah who, the people who said it was like the people who made the show so it's got new dialogue at <laughs> yeah, least yeah there's there's a recap voice at the beginning of the last episode and then they go into the recap of the whole season which ends with the recap of the last episode another bit of Atmon news is that there are some new screenshots that have been shown from the new opening and the new ending theme of Atmon finally gonna get rid of the weird ending yeah the weird ending we've had for like 10 episodes I yeah think. it's super weird also I feel like it's been 15 um, I'll see if I can actually show you any screenshots that aren't actually spoilers because you've explicitly said don't do said. that no no I'll show you the ones that aren't spoilers no I don't care nice I will me. eventually get there Okay, well, I like. I, I think it looks pretty cool. It's pretty exciting. You make me it's watch got, this ga- with it's got, you. It's got Haru with this face. Yeah. And it's uh. Yeah. It's got the Digimon with the grandpa. That's, is that the grandpa? Or is that or was that Afro Man? That's no, grandpa. Oh, that is grandpa. Yeah. And it also has a part that looks like one of the other. Spoilers. He's not dead. One of the no no. It looks like it's a it's a, like a TV image of him and looks like and another one. There's a screen that reminds me from the spin-off Atmon manga, which is the Atmon Academy one, and they're all in school, and Dokuma looks very upset, so I'm really excited to see what they do with the opening and ending, also with a really cool spoilery thing that happened. 
but yeah. it hasn't happened in show yet. In the next episode, wait, well, the next episode is 26, that's halfway through the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so 25 is probably the end of season one. Yes, which is the one that we're going to be covering this week. Wow, that is a really quick, that like, from where they are to the, if it's the end of the season, something, we, something big has to happen. Yep. Probably doesn't. I'm probably wrong about the whole timing of this. I, I just, I have high hopes for whatever Atmon does, so whatever. <sighs> for Lost in You know what they call an optimist? Me. Prone to disappointment. No. I'm an optimist when it comes to Atmon because I feel like it deserves my optimism. Not after that, like, eight episodes stretch of bad ones. Yeah, and then all of the ones at the top now, so that's fine. I'm okay with them getting the bad episodes, like, out, as long as they don't make any more ever again. (laughs) Never make any bad media ever again. Just don't do it. For Lost, don't do it. For Lost News Lately, Mon, yesterday night, if if you're listening to this as an edited episode, yesterday night, early early this morning, we re- released a special episode on something I found on eBay, which is this rather exciting Japanese-only bit of Zero Two media, and it's quite exciting, and I'm glad to share it with the world. I decided not to really cover it in not Lost News Lately, Mon, or as part of Digi News, because I felt like it was so big, it deserves its own episode. So that should be out. If you're listening to this episode edited, it should be out. And if not, I'm going to be uploading it and dealing with it in like a few hours. So yeah, hopefully it is as good as I I thought it was. And I'm glad to share it with the world. Jay is neutral. He does he doesn't care about this kind of thing. No, so much so I was barely listening. And yes, it's not out yet, but it, it's going to be soon. And. Another bit of Lost News Lately, Mon. The last chapter of our fanfic is being read this episode. I would say, thank God, but... Yeah, you've been enjoying it. No, but, no, but there's going to be more. Oh, yeah. So, speaking of, speaking of there being more, we have a survey set up, and it's sort of asking questions about how we should progress the continuation of this story, about what writing style, should I write it in legitimate, like has taken creative writing classes, knows how to form a sentence structure. It's not just going to be May said, so-and-so nodded. Are you sure? (laughs) Or should I write it in a fake emulation... I can't speak. Fake emulation of my 12-year-old self's writing style. That's one of the questions. And, yeah, and sh- should it be read in the outro still? And so far that is 100% of everyone says, yes, keep it in the outro. Yeah, because they're like, we don't want to hear this. No, no, instead of it just being like, do they want to hear us read it? They just doesn't, they don't, don't want me to just write it online. Oh, yeah. right, right, okay. Also, just as in terms of updates, um, it would probably be monthly at least or every two weeks depending on my schedule and depending on how much I want to write, but at least be monthly. At the very least. How many words is each chapter? It's only got to be like, I don't know, four, five hundred. Uh, it just, just depends on how much I can poop out, I guess. Yeah. Let me tell you. you know, I, I was going to say, like, writing is hard. You're about to learn. But that's actually not true. You have to write badly. Writing badly is really well, easy. I, I can write well if I want to, but I don't... I, the thing is, like, you know, I don't have to. I don't have to... Pub- I'm publishing it on the website now and on a blog, so... It don't actually has to be any quality. And there are also questions about our coverage of Lane in this survey. And speaking of which, one of the responses to one of the Lane-related questions about the fanfic, and it was an open-ended question, and this response said, maybe put... Oh, this is about the fanfic. Yeah, it's about the fanfic, sorry. Maybe put them up on YouTube or somewhere separate from the regular episode so it's easy to find. And I actually really like this idea. So when I have the time after this episode's released, some point in the future, I kind of want to compile all the nine parts and put them into one special episode and I'll label it as such so you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to hear them again. I think they should be in little videos that are in a playlist. Yeah. No, and well, we already upload all the episodes to YouTube No, but anyway. I mean like one video per chapter and then they're in a playlist so that they're easily consumable uh, and you can go to individual ones. Um, maybe. I just feel like it'd be nice to have them all as one. Well, depends on how long it would be. And then I was thinking as in terms of future releases... I could release them like that, besides also being in the outro, as like maybe like sets of like five chapters, I don't know. It's it's an interesting idea. And then we had another comment, and that's why I got confused just then, which is about Lane. And one of the open-ended responses says, you should what, you should review it um, in English because you'll get to hear the Digimon voice actors being in Lane as well and find that interesting. So I saw that obviously after I set up the survey and I'm not sure how cha- like adding a new question would affect the survey results because the survey software that I do for my work, it, the answer table is thrown amok 
if you add another question. So I just decided to do it as a separate poll. So I will link that. It's part of our weekly poll. We have two this week because of that. I like watching anime in English nowadays because I don't need the voice acting to be good. I just need it to be entertaining mm. and accurately get across what the story is. Then I'll be like, oh, I get it. Yep. Beyond the Boundary was like that. Oh, yeah. Now that, that was quite good. How unpleasant. How unpleasant. Because they're all doing the Japanese voices, but it was in English, yeah. As for our coverage of Lane, I think that we'll start covering it sometime in April. Maybe like, maybe mid-April, I'm not sure, but definitely I want to start in April. I would also like to try to have this as a Wednesday release, just so it's spread out from our Saturday and Sunday releases. So like a midweek sort of thing, I don't know. And yeah, uh, speaking of surveys and stuff, I also want to set up a survey for our birthday episode. And it's not out yet, but it will be sometime this week, so before episode 97's release. We have an episode planned for the birthday episode, and basically we want some of the best bits from the podcast, as well as the best bits from Digimon that we've covered. And if you want to use a line from the show or Digimon, please send us, like, the episode and the, you know, the timestamp of what happened, and we'll try to make it, put it into the show. We also have an exciting shirt planned, which we're organizing in April. What the shirt? The shirt. What the shirt? The shirt. Um, we won't say what it is. But we, I have mentioned it in the Patreon Slack chat, and it's pretty exciting. I'm excited. I want to see the art. Yeah. Well, was, well I guess we can say that we're commissioning Chisai for this, because Chisai deserves to be commissioned. When do, when are we going to see the art? I want to see it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Chisai. I'm really Chisai excited. About. Okay. Well, you can see my, my, my small sketch that I did. <laughs> That's what that was. Yeah. That, 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 that little sketch. Oh, that was awful. Oh, yeah, I said that without any context, didn't I? I just said, here's a sketch. Yeah. No, I, I sent, huh? like, a very bad sketch to Chisai, sort of what I wanted for this um, particular piece of art. And my golly, it is a work of art. And I'll, I'll, pro- I'll probably upload it, because it, it needs to be seen. My art after, is beautiful. After the full thing comes out. Yep. Oh, no, it's perfect. Maybe a day before. And, <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting. For weekly poll this week, Home Away From Home or Home Again to Kuya Returns, we won't talk about the differences because I have a discussion point planned later, which I've planned for about a week, um, and I have, I've been writing, that's why my segment goes so long this week. Is that discussion point, which one was better? Shut up. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. No, it's like, it, it's, it, it like compares and contrasts them, and I put a lot of time into this and have been working on it for like a week, so shut up. <laughs> Look forward to saying that all on your own while uh, I leave the room. And, you know, get a drink of Pepsi and get yes. some dogs. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Thank you. I oh, take that as tacit permission. And to yeah. Do so. Also, yeah, as I mentioned, the segment guide is very long because it is usually 4,000 to 5,000 words. It is now, of characters, it is now 12,000 characters. So that's a lot. It's and okay. our, our poor Patreons who are pledging $7 a month or more will get access to the segment guide and they'll be able to see my slow descent into madness as I, <laughs> as, as I write, like, you know, three times as much as I usually write. As you write a legitimate essay on it. Yeah, it doesn't even include my episode thought notes or obnoxious synopsis or anything else or post my pat it just includes my thoughts on home away from home and i'm really sorry and speaking of obnoxious synopsis onto that then when i straight up say flame on he's not ever called that in the yeah episode. i know but his name is flame on i picked that up after looking at your notes but like i didn't know that yeah oh no yeah <laughs> turns out his name is flame on congratulations sure I d- is that a spoiler <laughs> it, it's uh, well it's a spoiler for him showing up as flame on but it's not a spoiler for anything else you never find out his name his name's flame on by oh, the well, way I, did, I only read that after what i had already seen what mm. it was so yeah onto obnoxious synopsis although actually you spoiled it to me mm. because you showed me like your screenshot of the week or whatever where he's peering through the window I'm like what's that thing that on the window that wasn't my screenshot of the week, and I sent oh. that to you today. No, you posted on Facebook like a week oh, ago. Oh, yeah, I don't expect you to actually look at our Facebook. <laughs> he just scrolls through. I just naturally see them. You have to know that. Yeah, well, I thought you might have watched the episode by then, because that was Thursday I posted that. Yeah, I watched the first episode oh, okay. on yeah, you Tuesday. Watched the, you watched the first one so early, I was like, well, he must have seen the second one by And then now. you asked me that on the next day on Wednesday, and I was like, I haven't seen them. And I thought yet. you might have by Thursday. I don't know. You should, why please, do you just assume these please, things? let me just pass it on to Obnoxious Synopsis. I've been trying to Yeah, that. why don't you just pass the buck? Pass the buck. Pass it. Buck has been passed. Pass the buck. Nah. The first episode that we're watching this week is called Darkest Before Duskmon, or Total Destruction of Five Fighters? Terrifying Dark Power. What do you think will happen in this episode? Are you ready for an entire episode of the five kids fighting Duskmon and losing horribly? Because I'm going to be bored by it. Oh no. I hope it's more than just that. It won't be. Do you think anything will annoy you in this episode? I think it'll be annoying if like... Okay, here's the thing. If the kids all, you know, evolve to beasts and they all work together and they all just lose anyway, Mm -hmm. then it implies they need to do something more to beat this Duskmon. And even so... Like, 
It would beg the question why why didn't Dustman start fighting to begin with? What's mm-hmm. his motivation? Is he if he's serving Trubimon then he would always have won, especially when the kids were a lot weaker. It just doesn't make any sense why he's only showing up now. Unless we find out that story, but honestly, I don't think we're ever going to... Well, I think we'll get a discussion of his motivation, but I don't think it'll be interesting at all. Do you think it'll be a good episode? Uh, probably not. I mean, it is Frontier, right? You can't just say that every week. You can't say it'll be bad because Frontier. I'm probably correct, though. Maybe. Maybe. What rating? It's probably a five. Filler or not filler? It's... (sighs) <sighs> okay, so it is necessary to to show you that Dust One is strong. So it's not filler. But I don't think anything will be truly like accomplished. Like, at the end of the day, if I were to tell if you were to go, Oh well the kids respect Dust One's power, you know? And that's really what was accomplished. Mm. You could have you could have had that just implied. But instead I think we're gonna have a a big fight that's a big waste of time as so well. So maybe like you're saying semi filler? It's, yeah, it's it's not filler, but it's also kind of unnecessary, right? But like not like the Bergamon episode, which was necessary. No, it wasn't. It actually accomplished the opposite. It showed him to be weaker than he really was. It lied to you. The show misled you on how strong um, Pedaldramon is. Maybe. The second episode that we're watching this week is called Home Again, Takuya Returns, or My Home, Takuya's Lonely Return. What do you think will happen in this episode that wasn't explicitly said in the titles? So, I think that maybe Edamon throws Takuya into, like, the death ball, and he has, like, a halluc- like a hallucination almost of him being home, but, and, but he has his Digimon there, and everyone's like, oh my god, what is that? And he's like, oh, it's a soccer ball, don't worry about it. So, do you think it's just Flamon's head? And it'll, Flamon, it'll, be, uh, it'll be August 8th? A- Agunimon's head. Flamon's head. I don't know why I got Flamon What's from. What's Flamon? I have no idea. Did you make it up? I think I did. I must have. Okay, well, it's, it's actually a big spoiler and you just don't want to say No, I, I think I just made it up because I'm like, oh, Goonimon, I forgot his name. What is he? He's a flame. So I guess Flamon, right? More or less. Anyway. It, it, yeah. So, yeah, he's going to go home. Look at that. Do you think anything will annoy you? I think the... Re- you know what? I just realised... The kids could always go home. It was never not an option. Yeah, they just, they just choose to be there at this point. So I, I guess if it's really lame, as always, you know. But I, what I think will learn is that I think it will be lame. Do you think he'll come back? Do I think who, like do you, Takuya? Do, do you think they're now in the real world now, or do you think? Oh, of course they'll, they'll go back. back. I think the story largely takes place in um, the digital world. I don't see very much room for it to move into elsewhere. Like, I don't see it being in the real world very much. What, it wouldn't be the frontier anymore, right? Uh, yeah, good point. I, I, guess that, I guess that's a point. Do you think it'll be a good episode? No. Again, it's frontier, man. Like, I don't know what you want. It's not going to improve. So you think it won't be as good as Digimon Adventure Home Away From Home? I don't think it'll be as good, no. Because that episode was a good... I, th- I think I remember it being decent, yeah. Do you want to watch it again? Because I don't. No. No, I don't. Don't have to do that. No one was making you make me do that. What rating would you give it? I'm going to give this thing... I Honestly, I think it's actually going to be so badly handled that it's going to get a four. Wow. Yeah. I'm just aggressive like with not liking this show sometimes. And that's yeah. okay. That's who I Especially am. Especially because we record Obnoxious Synopsis straight after we cover Atmon. Like, we watch and then we record our Atmon episode. And I feel like, you know, like, oh, yeah, Atmon's really good. Oh, Frontier. It's oh. hard to have hope when it's like, well, this is this is your track record, right? Mm. Well, at least we know that they get better, right? Like, the Digimon series is, hopefully. Do they? I mean, Tamers got better, and then this one got a lot worse. Savers is a lot better than Frontier. I still maintain that Savers is definitely the most underrated season. I would say Zero Two is probably the most overrated. You can maintain whatever you want. It doesn't make it necessarily true. I think Tamers is slightly overrated. I still think it's good, though. Uh, so yeah, Savers is, Savers is strong. Looking forward to Savers. Starting Savers in August. Early August. Oh, God, it's such a long time away, and there's so much frontier in the meantime. And X-Evolution. Oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> we have to cover X-Evolution, and then we do our Odaiba Day episode, and then we start Savers. I'm going to die. I'm going to die, too. and it will be your fault. So, filler or not filler? I don't think I asked you that question yet. It will be not filler, of not course. Not filler? Okay, so semi-filler and not filler. Okay. 
Anything else you want to say about these episodes besides you just screaming loudly, Frontier's bad! I would like to be inebriated while we watch them if possible, but I don't think that's an option. Jeez. All right. Well, I guess on to the show, and hopefully it is a good... Let's-a go! Let's-a go! So, we will be covering both these episodes as one, since nothing really, really happens in the first episode, and it, the payoff is kind of like the second episode happening. And yeah, the first episode is pretty okay by itself, but it's improved on by the second episode. So we're covering them as one episode this week. Can we literally discount the first ten minutes of the first episode and just say they fight Dusk One and don't do well? Um. Well, that's sort of what happens. Um. I don't want to go into the details of what happened in the fight because well, it doesn't okay, matter. Well, I've got the parts that are different in. So in the original, he shows up and he's like, "Show me how powerful like you are," and he's like, "Oh, I'm tough." And you know, then he attacks them, and then he says again. Show me your strength. And in the dub, this is changed to him saying, look, I'll give you, like, the chance to surrender. And then there's some actual smart bits where Wolfmon tells Blizzamon and Bogmon to fight in their human forms because they're faster. I thought it was actually really stupid because it doesn't matter. They're just weaker that way. They're so infinitely weaker. Why would you do I that? I don't think it's... I, th- I don't think it's, like, a huge jump of power. It is. It clearly is. That's why they're upgrades. I know, but I feel like they're also, in some ways, worse because they're not as fast or they've got, like, another stat down so they want to use a different stat, like speed. Duskmon doesn't move fast to get out of the way because he doesn't need to. Also, so Duskmon barely talks in the original version because he's spooky. Yeah. And then when Wolfmon and him cross swords, in the English version, Duskmon starts mocking Wolfmon instead of just, like, glaring at him. It's because he has no visible moving mouth. He has no mouth, and so he must scream in English. (laughs) It's really accurate. Wow, I didn't even find it that funny. I just wrote it. Okay. No, it's he has the mouth, so he must talk incessantly. Yeah. Um, I it's do. A, yeah. One thing I like about him is how weird his eyes are. Mm-hmm. And, like, when people are behind him, he doesn't turn around. His eyes just rove, rove back and oh, look at the things terrifying. that are there. Oh, it is terrifying. No, I really like it. Or I, later I, I like episode, Dustmon. He's searching the forest by standing still while his eyes just look around. Yeah, no, that it's... He's quite a scary-looking bad guy. It's good design. But yeah, I, I like it. I like his design. Virtualmon calls Duskmon an eyeball-covered freak. I'm like, yeah, that, well, that's sort of what it is. That, he, that's sort of what he is, buddy. He's like, you kids are an eyesore. Uh, he did say that! He did. Wolfmon then says they have to retreat because they won't be able to beat him. Takuya's upset and says he could have beaten him with one more hit. And the other Chosen aren't really paying attention because they're kind of, like, discussing amongst themselves, like, oh, you think we can ever beat him? And they're, they're talking about, you know, str- strategies and stuff. Well, the difference here is yep. that um, in the original, Takuya's like, oh, I was, I had him, I had him, I was close, right? Mm. If you let me, I would have beaten him. He's also talking to him, he seems like he's talking to himself. Mm. Also, in English, the weird one is, no guys, I beat him. He's dead. Why are we running? Yeah, it's instead of saying, oh, I could have beaten him. He's saying, oh, I already beat him. Yeah, he's done. Yeah. I, I won that yeah. fight. What are you talking about? Also, he's never been like this the rest of the show. He's been a bit brash. He's never been Davis. Yeah. He's just become Davis. Yeah, this part, he was very Davis. Who is this kid? This is not the same kid from all the other episodes. He's Davis, but he's, vo- he's voiced by Matt. I really get the sense. He's your two of your favorite oh my characters. God, I'll die. I get the sense that they had a story they wanted to tell, and they realized they didn't have the right tools for it. So they just said, screw it, we'll just make him like that. I feel it was okay in the original version, at least. It was still too much. And you can tell it's too much, because... Let's be honest, while Koji has been conservative, he's never been the most reasonable person on the team. I like Koji. No, that's not what I'm saying. He's just never been the most reasonable person on the team. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess. Okay, how is he suddenly, easily the most reasonable person on the team? By a long margin. Oh yeah, in this episode, yeah. Why is it that all of a sudden, where they didn't really have big complaints about his personality before. Now all the kids are talking like, oh yeah, Takuya? <laughs> that guy. They're talking behind his back the way they were talking about Davis. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, we just let him think he's the leader. Also, Junpei calls Koji, like, unpleasant. How unpleasant. How unpleasant. But yeah, so in the dub, they're spitefully ignoring him and they're saying, do you hear something? Oh, it must be just the wind. And I don't know why they're doing this. They're just so mean. Like, it's fine to sort of just say, oh, just disregard him. Let's just talk about strategies and stuff. They're actively, like, ignoring him. Takuya, uh, not Takuya, Tomoki wonders if there's a safe place in this world. Yeah, he's been a huge coward and crying. Mm. Yeah, so everyone just sort of, like, takes a bit of a character shift in this episode except for Izumi. Like, Izumi's the only one who doesn't have too much of a character 
moment she Yeah, she didn't have a character in the first place, that's why. Yeah, Azumi's still there. She's just as Italian as she always was. Yeah. Don't be, don't be fooled. Koji asked Takuya if he felt anything special. In the dub, Koji says that Takuya wasn't being a team player and people could have gotten hurt. So it's a bit of a different thing to say. I mean, like, he still has a, he has a point. Yeah, he's being totally reasonable. Yeah. And then Beekmon gets in the way and is like, guys... Let's let's um let's all go eat. Yeah, he interrupts Takuya, and Takuya gets really upset, and he says, "You are angry because you are hungry." I'm like, "I love you, I love you, Bigmon." He's the best character. He's the best. In the dub, Bokemon seems mainly concerned with himself being hungry rather than the other kids. In the original, it just came across as a moment where he was saying, "We all have to eat because we're all in a bad mood, and you know we have to." take a step back to think about this. And clearly an attempt to draw everyone's attention away from the argument. Yeah, in the dub it's just like, well, Bokemon's hungry now, so he wants to eat. That is a lot funnier, though. Honestly, I, you could you could have presented that in a way where it's like, everyone's arguing, and this like one guy goes, I'm hungry! That's a Namon thing to do. It is. It is, actually. Um, and there's this weird scene where Izumi and Junpei are talking, and Izumi's like, what would happen if there were two Takuyas? And she's this w- imagination of them, like, walking them all off a bridge. And then she doesn't get one for Koji, because honestly, what would happen? Nothing would happen. They would just say, hey, maybe we should, I don't know, go in this forest that's full of death. No. And Koji would say, no. And the other Koji would say, no. And they'd be like, okay, maybe we shouldn't. No, they would stare at each other, like, glare, cross their arms, and go, <laughs> They'd probably their fight. They would fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to think that they didn't write up a way that, you know, two Kojis would be a problem because I don't think they could think of anything that was sort of funny. And Takuya's one was okay. Yeah, but it's not, it's really not the Takuya that we know. Yeah. He's not blindly run forward into danger. He's never really done that except in this episode mm. because they made him do it. Mm. And I know it's really, it's always been really weird for me to say, oh yeah, the, the, or, the, you know, the writers of the show made a character do something. They made a character do everything. But you can tell what a character would and would not do naturally. Yep. That's your intuition as a person. And it's a very distinctly different Takuya from every other episode. And we're oh, yeah. episode 21. Yeah. We, we know this kid enough to know this is an inaccurate portrayal of him. It's to set up the next episode. And, you know, his devastation. Yeah, but it's cheap. It's cheapened as a result. Yes, a, a little bit. Izumi approaches Junpei as he's, like, starting a fire, which is weird that he's starting the fire and not Takuya, the person with fire ability, but never mind. And Junpei mentions how it's weird that things that st- can start fires that shouldn't be able to start fires. And, you know, they things work differently. And Izumi's like, yeah, things are just like that in the digital world. In the dub, JP comments on how he wouldn't be able to do things like this in the real world. And Zoe says, do you mean talking to a girl who won't run away from you? God, she's mean. I'm like, why is that entirely necessary? Like, I feel like Izumi was being all right in the original. She was just like, oh, yeah, th- th- yeah things just happen differently. But, you no, know, she had to be mean. Izumi asks Junpei what he thinks, and Junpei says that he thinks it's fine, and he doesn't really know much, but nobody's perfect, and how they're reckless people like Takuya, and unpleasant and cautious people like Koji, and it's a balance that makes it a good team. Clearly not. They're a pretty bad team. Uh, yeah, I know, but I still... They've never been a good team. I kind of like what he's coming from, like, they're giving him... You know, he's, he's thoughtful. Oh, no. This is a great moment for Junpei, for sure. But mm. he's also wrong. Yeah. In Adventure, you could see how the team worked. They operated in a particular way. And you say, okay, everyone sort of has a job. Mm. And this is one of the, I think, key failings of Zero Two, was that, like, they didn't have that. Yeah. And then in Tamers, once again, you go, okay, I know what everyone does. And now again, here... They have tropes. They don't have characters. They have tropes. They have the hothead. They have the lone wolf. They have the kid. They have the girl. And they have the nerd. Yeah, that that might be the case. But even so, those tropes don't work together. Like, Adventure was full of tropes, too. Yeah, but it was... You had the sport kid. You had the girly girl. You had the tomboy. You had the kid. You had a kid. But that's because they had characters besides their trope. Yeah, exactly. And also, they just interacted with each other better. Yeah. When... You know, very rarely in Frontier, I'm actually struggling to think of a time where they do, do the kids work together to solve a problem? They have sometimes worked together. The Kukum one episode. Which one is that? Uh, where Junpei gets his human spirit. You're right, you're in the power plant. Um, that is one example. Because And but he's like, using the, the figures to, like, he's, he's, he's plotting something out. Yeah. Like, he's plotting out a plan, and he, this happens in this episode as well, it just doesn't work. I'm just thinking, a majority of the time the kids work together, they mm. fail. And then the majority of the time the kids are successful, it's when one of them has done something by themselves. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, this, that's just, I don't like this team very much, and I think is wrong. But you go on. I feel like when they strategize, it's usually a 
good a good happen. Yeah, it's just rare. Yeah, I mean they try to do in this episode, but obviously it doesn't work because Takuya's being stupid. Okay, the whole that whole bit makes no sense. Then they have a bit where Junpei is talking about how it'd be terrible if there were two Takuyas because they'd all you know fall off a cliff and die. And this is quite a funny scene. And then Izumi starts to begin to imagine what it'd be like to two Kojis, and Junpei says, "You don't have to imagine them." And she's like, "That's a relief." And- <laughs> That's funny. And he, and he says that this, you know, balance is important and it's just like when you start a fire. And Azumi says, how is it related? And Junpei says, well, it's important where you place the firewood in a fire. So it's the same with teams. Azumi calls Junpei smart and Junpei says he'll talk about his love next. And Azumi puts her hand in her fa- his face. And this is quite a funny moment. Because he tries to kiss her. And amazingly, this scene is very much the same in the English version. More or less. Which is weird. Because this is not JP's character. It fits Junpei, because Junpei has actually been improving. And he's been shown to be quite smart and quite thoughtful. Like, he had the blueprints for the boat. And in the dub, you know, everyone says, oh, that's not going to work. But in the original, it probably would have worked. Like, Junpei's quite smart and quite thoughtful. It tells me that they couldn't come up with enough jokes to fill the time. So they go, oh, we'll just translate it one-to-one, I guess. The, yeah, they said, all oh, the one at the end's enough. <laughs> because I feel like in the dub, J- JP is always dumbed down. And whenever he says something thoughtful in the dub, it's always changed to, hey, Zumi, aren't you pretty? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I feel like it's quite a character leap. Like, it's it's like, okay, JP, where did you get this character growth? In the original, it's just like, oh, this is a long time coming, sort of. It's hard for me to really get that sense because I'm watching the Japanese as well. So mm. I'm seeing someone who looks exactly like him develop. So I'm like, oh, okay, close enough. Mm. Well, I, I was trying to think of, like, the difference. I'm like, yeah, that, that's, that's a difference. Takuya and Tomoki are looking for food. And Tomoki asks Takuya what will happen now. And Takuya says to relax because he's got a plan to defeat the eyeball guy. And I really love how Takuya speaks. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, it's the eyeball guy. He doesn't say, oh, Duskmon. Like, I'm like I'm pretty sure Taichi would, would always use the names. He didn't usually describe him so, in the original really version. My, my point is Taichi for best goggle kid, except maybe T- Takato and Haru. No, it is. Tai is the best goggle he's, kid. He's the best impulsive, he, abrupt goggle kid. He fits the... I mean, obviously, he created the archetype, but he fits that position as the goggle kid best. Yeah. Haru is the best... Of the kids with goggles, but he's not the best at being a goggle kid, if that makes sense. Same with Takato, who's just basically a bit of a small nerd. No, Takato is crap Haru. <laughs> Come on, tell me I'm wrong. Okay. He's crap Haru. He doesn't have Gatchmon, but he has Gilmon. Yeah, Gilmon's a little bit better, maybe. Who, who prefer Gatchmon or Gilmon? Uh, tsh, mm, I prefer Gilmon, I think, because I've seen him more. And he's a different flavor, I guess. And he comes with um, Terrymon on the side. Okay, good point. Um, anyway, so I know that Beakmon tells Tolmon to pick up something with his back. I'm like, don't do that! Don't yeah. lift with your back! Bad plan! Bad plan. And Koji's just watching them. But in the dub, Bokemon says that Neymon shouldn't complain because he's holding two buckets. <laughs> Instead of him trying to give that false advice, it's fake news. Fake advice. <laughs> fake news. It's not fake news. Live with your back. I know it'll be. Te- it, I know it'll be fantastic for your back. It'll be bigly for your back. Big, big, bigly goods for your back. Then we have a really scary moment with Dusk Mom, where, as we mentioned earlier, he's just using his eyeballs to see. Oh, it's so like, cool. It's this is a very cool thing for Digimon to have. It's just it, it's spooky. I like it. Takuya and Tomoki come back to the others and suggest attacking all at once. Izumi says hmm. we already did that. Yeah, they did exactly that. Yeah, actually. and what they're trying... like The plan seems a lot like what they already tried. It seems like exactly what they already tried, in fact. And it's weird, because when they initially reject it, they go, we've already done that. They go, no, 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 but this time, we'll attack all at once. And then they all go, oh, yeah, we'll attack all at once! Yeah, and they're all on board yeah. now. And I don't know why. Then we see these cute figures that Tomoki made for them. Which, yeah, they look... They, they did a good job. But they're terrible because there's no Bokemon and Neymon, and Bokemon and Neymon are sad. What are they going to do? Be cute. Sit behind a rock. I don't know. I love them. They do sit behind a rock. That's my screenshot of the week. It's the funniest part of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> do something, please. However, I really like how whenever the kids strategize because I feel like it's not done enough in Digimon. They never really like try to plan things. They're always no. just like, we didn't attack harder. All right, the plan is... Attack harder. And if not, evolve, then attack harder. Yeah. yeah. This one seems like, okay, you go this, you go over here, you go over here, I'll attack here, I'll hold him in place. It doesn't, the plan doesn't work. Well, guaranteed, but they I like have how, to evolve first before they can beat him. I know, but I like the, I like the attempt to strategize. But I, that's what they already did! I know, but I like when they strategize. Azumi says it's a so-so plan. Well, like, it is. I love you, Azumi. Thank, thank you for having a line that I didn't hate. 
Junpei says that there's a problem, and then Azumi and Junpei say that they're wondering how Gunimon will be able to stop Duskmon from moving when he was completely beaten last time. That's a good point. And Taku's like, <laughs> Taku's just like, oh, I, I, I let my guard down. And they're like, okay, fair enough. That's not true. Wait, Nem- who Nemo- said that? T- uh, Taku says he was Taku like... didn't leave his guard down. He f- threw a big thing of fire at him and thought he had killed him yeah. and did no damage. Nemon says that he's very confident, and Bokemon says, yeah, for no reason. Fair enough. I love them. Koji doesn't like the plan, and then says that Duskmon's different. Koji, sh- Koji suggests that they have an escape plan instead, because they're not going to be able to beat him. Then Koji says that he wants to talk to Takuya. And then Koji's like, well, don't get the wrong idea. I just want to talk. And, t- and Takuya <laughs> says, I wouldn't mind if it's more than that. And I know that it- I know that they were talking about fighting, but I was like, are they going to make out? I, you know what? I, what? I, I wrote it down as in, like, oh, yeah... He's he's up for a fight. He's into it. But like no, when you said it, like it's not more, it's not more than that. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh okay, yeah. yeah, I see it. I see the ship sailing. In the dub, Takuya says, "If Koji's lucky, all they'll do is talk." I'm like, wow, okay. Oh no, no. If he's lucky, they'll do more than talk. Also, this part, Tomoki is floating. <laughs> I didn't notice. He is he's floating. He is like, and like one of his shoe is kind of like one of his shoe. N- not hasn't been detailed. <laughs> well, whatever. And yeah, he's floating quite far off the ground, but he looks quite stunned. <laughs> is that your screen of the week? Because I want to see it. It was going to be. Oh, well, I did. I did could upload possibly it. Possibly have been I, that. Look, you said you, that you saw um, spoils of flame on. Well, is that it? We're just looking through the window because that's lame. Yeah, but I also uploaded um, the the floating. I'll, I'll get up a picture well, because, because it is it quite funny. Didn't leave an impression on me. <laughs> oh, because you probably didn't couldn't tell. Um, <laughs> oh, I like those ones though. Okay, so look, he is floating. No, he's not. He's he is. standing he's there. He's floating. He's floating. No, he's standing on the ground. No, because in the oh my god, in the in the, no, in the full shot, there's someone standing. I should have kept the full you shot. You big nitpickers. Because somebody was standing next. Okay, I deleted the full shot. Oh wow, well, somebody you've ruined was, it. Somebody was standing next to him on the same level, but wasn't floating. And it, I don't know he's not very well grounded. And, yeah. So, I also noticed, isn't separating the group a really bad idea? Yes. And we, but, and we learn that, because Duskmon shows up. It's fine. So, Koji asks why Takuya is here, and why he's fighting, and Koji says how either he must think that he's a hero of vid- a video game, and he has to reconsider that right now, if that's what he thinks. Takuya says that he's wrong, and Koji asks if he's sure, and says how that they'll lose, and they'll all die, if, if he, it's not just a video game. And they can't just retry. And then he asks why Takuya came up with such a reckless plan. And then, of course, even though Koji says he doesn't want to fight, grabs Takuya by the collar and pushes him to a wall. I was saying to myself, like, hey, he doesn't want to fight. That's a really not Matt-like thing to do. And then he goes immediately to violence. I'm like, ah, there's Matt. I see it now. I I don't want to fight. Next scene is pushing him into the wall, strangling him almost. But, I mean, like, it's to show that he really means business. (laughs) <laughs> I really mean business. So Koji says that he, when he clashed swords with Duskmon, he says that he could tell that Duskmon hasn't even shown half his power yet, and how Duskmon was just playing with them. Takuya says that he knows that, but he says no, that, he they, that they have two spirits each, and that they can do it if they work together, because that's how they're winning so far, and, you know, they have friends. In the dub, Takuya says they're the good guys, and there must be a way to win, because that's how it's always been. I love the idea that... You know, the perspective of, like, oh, do you think this is some sort of video game? And that's an interesting conversation, which is not helped by the fact that they walk down in an actual elevator. Mm. It's when they teleport into the digital world that's a better argument. But it's still interesting. Mm. What I like is to choose, but we've been winning so far. We must be, we've been doing it right. Yeah, and the fact in the dub, he says, we're the good guys. Okay, that's a bit squirrel girly for me. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bit, well, the heroes win because they're meant to win, but the, we've been winning, and thus our strategy must have been correct. Yep. So why would we ever stop? I think that's really interesting. Yeah. Because he's a child, that makes sense. Koji lets go up to Kuya, and Koji says he was going to be reckless and die to promise him that he won't involve the others. And then if he, sa- he says if he can't promise that, you should just go back to the real world. Then the earth starts shaking because... Guess what? They separated the team and Duskmon has shown up because Yay. it's pretty convenient for him to show up. The other children, Beast Spirit, d- evolved. So we got a pretty much short, very short and split evolution. In the dub, it's just padded out again. I'm not sure where they're getting this time from. I honestly think well, maybe the video file is just longer. I didn't look. They spend a lot of time cutting little small bits of violence. Possibly. Like they cut quite a bit of Duskmon being kicked in the face. <laughs> And in general, just like violence in general, there's like a contact, it's cut. Or, you know, it's replaced with something else. Duskmon has shown up and Takuya tells Koji not to run away. Which I think, like, ouch, dude. Well, ne- yep. take your shots. 
Nermon and Bokemon pop up from some rubble, and it's really cute. And they said they've been waiting for them, and to do something, please. That's my favourite. Koji and Takuya Spirit Evolve. In the dub, it's not split, but I noticed something really weird, is that the end, we get an added-on clip from, like, the previous episode, like, of Kendogurumon howling after his evolution. Yay. Like, and I think it might be from his first evolution to Kendogurumon, maybe, and I don't know why they put it there. So Shudamon thinks that they have no choice but to go through with Takuyamon's plan because they can't leave him alone. And Garumon is pretty much not wanting to do the plan. In the dub, he's like, he seems more reluctant than in the original, but he's still like not wanting to do it. Kori Kakumon in the dub says Takuya's plan is a good plan. And it's not. it's not, but you know, I love how Tomoki has like, yes, he's like my Total older brother. Faith. I love him. Total faith in Takuya, absolutely. He's, he's so sh- he's shaped like a friend. I love him. He's shaped like a bear. He's shaped like a bear. Bears are friends. Okay. Agumon kicks Dustmon in the face, and Dustmon asks if that's all. He just no sells it. It's really rough. And I love how with the will just stops because like, oh, I did it. Yeah, cool music, and then it just stops. And I'm like, that's with the won't. <laughs> There you go. Just pure silence. I've been wanting to say that the whole time, but every episode, when I've, I've, I've just completely missed saying with the won't. But oh, now I did. You did it. With the won't. You don't have to be that proud of I'm yourself. very proud of I'm proud of it whenever I say something, okay? <laughs> every time. Agunimon starts punching his face, and Takuya realizes he's not doing any damage. Then Takuya remembers that he has friends, so it's not over. <laughs> In the dub, he seems more worried and less sure. And which he should be. Agunimon holds Dustmon still so the others can attack together. Like Piccolo in that one thing that you'll read one one day. day? Dustmon absorbs the attack because of course he does. And then Dustmon says he'll start with Agunimon. Garamon jumps in the way and Dustmon has a PTSD moment and he sees... When he sees Koji, and he wonders what the meaning is the meaning of this is. It's weird that he like uses the name, honestly. Mm. If it's just like, oh, a kid is dying, I'm having feelies about it. Okay, mm. fine. No, he's like, Koji specifically. Oh no, Koji. My partner. Do you think that's what it is? Do you think that these evil spirits are actually meant to be their partners? Mm, I think there's a possibility. So yeah, he starts freaking out, absorbs everything in darkness. In the dub, he says a few things about what's happening instead of just Koji. In the original, just screaming, Koji, 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 what's happening, Koji? Takuya shows up at something called a darkness terminal, and he's told that he's lost sight of his goal and path and how he's in great despair, and if he wants to be go back to his world that he came from. And I thought these were eyes, but they turned out to be just a scary train. And it's like, only chosen who have exposed their hearts to darkness can ride the doom train. I'm like, spoopy. <laughs> Takuya gets on board. In the dub, Takuya seems more hesitant and sort of questions, should, like, should I go back? Should I not just help my friends? And he's like, oh, I was never able to help them in the st- in like, to start with. He's like, oh, yeah, this is for me. And I don't know, like, it's, this is quite a good ending of that episode. Whereas I think in the English he goes, well, that's where, that's where guys like me end up. So it's not... He talks too much. He goes, guys who are different. So it makes it... Rather than him giving up on Mm. himself, it's more... uh, People are judging me, so I guess I go. Yep. Which is really lame. I also found that it meant more in the original because he was silent, basically. He was having a breakdown. And, you know, it was quite emotional. But when when he talks, it's like... I don't know, he seems sort of like he's being a baby instead of actually having an emotional moment. Mm. Also, we should establish right now, that's the coolest bit of Frontier. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is a, this is a crap episode, honestly. This is a, uh, this is an, honestly a 5 out of 10 By itself, by itself, I gave it a 6. It, it's, it's a crap episode, and then it's got a 10 out of 10 ending. You get to the right at the end, you're like, oh, the Doom Train! Oh, this is so cool! Yeah, like, it was a very good ending. I get, yeah, I gave it a 6 out of 10, but I feel like it was probably a 6 out of 10 because I knew what was coming. I knew, like, oh, he, yeah, he goes back to the the real world and we get home away from home again so yeah the next episode starts and I just want to note that this is episode 22 and home away from home was episode 21 so I'm like it's so close to being the like you know such a such a reference you know, it is a thing that would happen in the middle of a season Shut about up. approximately to give ne- you uh, never happened before. some kind of juxtaposition mm. there's no way that could work in the formula of the season no, no. Anyway, so so Takuya is um, cowarding out, Mm -hmm. as he does, and he sort of accepts defeat, and uh, he exits out onto the elevator, and he becomes some kind of really lame-looking Digimon. But a bit before that, no, in the dub, it sort of they sort of add in a few audio flashbacks as he's looking like hopeless. I guess to sort of add emotion to the scene, but I feel like it was more emotional with just the music, to be yeah, honest. But they have no respect for silence at all. So yeah, his name is Flamon in the original and Flamon in the English version. I call him Kingdom Hearts character. He does. 
I haven't even played that much Kingdom Hearts, but my god, you, you know the design. I know theory. the design. Yeah, it's 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 similar to Digimon with like really skinny limbs and big hands and feet, but also it's got like bracelets and belt buckles and big shorts yeah. and no shirts. So what this is, this is Agunimon's child form. It looks like it. Yeah. You can see that. And so, yeah, he's back at the station where he started. And he's wondering why he's here. And I find this bit really dumb because he literally was asked, do you want to go back home? And now he's wondering why he's home. In the dub, he at least says, I'm not home. Where is that this place? And then he realizes that this is where he went to the digital world to start with. In the dub, the flashbacks also have more dialogue in them, besides just being flashbacks with, like, instrumental songs, like quite nice music, quite emotional music. They've just added in the same lines, and this happens throughout the whole episode, so I'm probably not going to say every time it happens, because this episode in general adds a lot more dialogue than is needed in the English version. And I I'm, ignored them all anyway. And I'm not sure if I just noticed it more because they had dialogue, but I feel like there were more flashbacks in the English version. But I might be wrong. That's just, yeah, that's just something I noticed because, yeah, as I said, it could just be because it had more dialogue in it, because I feel, so I felt them more, but I just feel like it had more flashbacks. Duskmon shows up and he's silent. In the dub, because silence is, as I always say, naughty, naughty, bad, bad, he's laughing. Also, I don't know if you know this, but this is like the first instance in... It's definitely the first instance in Frontier. Uh-huh. Um, I'm sure there were tons of them in Tamers, but I was really bad at picking them up, but it's... Yeah, so let's you know there's enough entertainment that I'm just I'll just say this frontier. This is the first time in frontier we have a metaphor. Mm. Oh my god, Dusk One, he's a metaphor for defeat and like your fears yeah. chasing you and he runs into the elevator and he cowards out again and I'm like, there's meaning to this. Yeah, I and kind of, I like it. There's like a story happening. Mm. And a, and a thing is happening to this character, and oh my god, stuff! Yeah, stuff is actually happening that mean things. I know we ha- yeah. And they took 22 episodes! In Tamers, we had the bit where he was saying, oh, I don't want Gil- like, when Gilmon Dark evolved, and he's, and he's, like, presented with all these Gilmons, and he says, no, no, I don't want that, any Gilmon, I want my Gilmon. I think more of, um, the, the moment where, like, what's her name? Um, Jury is in the big monster thing, and mm. she sees the dad, and you don't go through all of that stuff, you're like, stuff is happening! Yeah. And you got that a lot more. And yeah, this it's, is it's, the first it's nice when that. stuff happens. No, it, it hasn't really happened in Frontier. So he ends up back in the train station, and everyone thinks he's in a cosplay. In the dub, yeah, he it's sort of the same sort of thing, except someone says he looks kind of like a goat creature. Not really. The like, guy's oh, got the feet. He's a lion boy. What do you mean? He's wearing shoes, isn't he? He's got like claws and Isn't stuff. Hoofs? Yeah, he's got he's got claws coming out of his feet. If he's claws, then he's not I a know. goat. I don't know. I thought they looked a bit like a goat. I can't remember. He's got horns, at least. I, I you know, all, that... all those all those things with horns, like you know, lizards. They're they're, 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 they're goat. They're bare... Oh, I'm not making that They've joke. got, like, little bumpies. I'm They've not making bumpies. that joke. Don't make me try to make that joke. I'm not going to make you make any joke. Okay. Uh, so, Takuya notices it is different, and then he explodes into fire. I'm pretty sure he kills somebody. Yeah, yeah, he Doesn't probably... a body go flying when yes, he does that? I'm pretty sure he sets someone on fire. And, uh, yeah, so rest in peace, random guy. Get ripped on. Um, I bet it was the kid who says, he looks like he's in cosplay, mummy. <laughs> So, you know... This is he, a weird episode, by the way. He's... There, he runs into some bushes, and then he's watching, and Duskmon's in the bushes with him. And so he screams, and people hear him, and then he starts calling out for his mum and dad. In the dub, he's only calling out for his dad. Every time he makes any noise, everyone in the area looks at him, mm. which is what I always thought people should have with Imon. Yeah. With Imon, he's just running around being fine until he finally shoots a fireball at someone, and they go, Hey, I, what I, are you doing? I think people just think he's like... A naughty child. Yeah. No, but like with Takuya, he's he can be he doing normal stuff, but everyone's mm. afraid of him because he looks weird. Mm. Imon can't get away with that. He can't, he can't get away with looking like he's not a child. Takuya's jumping everywhere, and he finds his house. And just some, a quick thing I noticed about the nameplate is that they have the dad's full name, and then the mum, Takuya, and his brothers just their first name. <clears throat> so I know I find that I just find that strange that they've just assumed that they all have the same last name. Well, no, they don't. The mum's maiden name is blank, and they all kept that. Oh no! Okay, good point. Yeah, obviously. In, yeah, clearly that that is clearly the only. That's the only thing it could yeah, possibly be. That, that's the only solution. In the dub, it just says Kanbara family, and then each family member's first name. Flamont almost gets hit by a car, so he jumps over it, and it's his aunt and cousin Michan, who in the dub is just called Michi, so I'm, yeah, I just, so it's his family members, and they're understandably terrified when they see him, 
And then Flamon sees his reflection and he realizes he's a Digimon, even though he literally set fire to some guy. Yeah. Also, he was jumping in between buildings and, and I was, was surprised. Looking, he was looking at his hands as well. Yeah, he was like, oh, I'm not me. And now he only realizes now. I feel like Although, they took two moments. Give him credit. He spent enough time as a Digimon that maybe doing those things isn't itself like... Oh, it wouldn't fair. immediately stand out to you mm. if you're flying in one place when you were doing it all the time before. It's like um, it's like the astronauts when they get back from space mm. and they're like, they they, dro- they put cups in the middle of the air and they just drop and they look back to where to go because yeah. they forget about gravity. Yeah, no, I have I have heard about that. No, you're right. You're right. Maybe it's less weird. Those then. are the best videos. But you should watch honestly, those. I don't think Frontier had enough thought to say, to do that. No, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Takuya starts, like, madly pressing buttons on his Digivice, wanting to be turned back. It doesn't work. I notice that whenever something goes wrong, they always just mash buttons on their detector. You mean the buttons on Digivices that no one has ever used ever? Okay, I kind of like how for once they're actually doing it. There are lots of buttons on the original Digivice. Did they ever press them once? Not not in the first season and not in the second season, but in Tamers when he was when he was looking at the, the Digi-Egg that hatched, he was scrolling through the buttons on his DR. Oh, okay. But it's, it is weird for that they press buttons a lot. And only if one it doesn't do anything. Mm. Um, and also, he says something like, uh, oh, yeah, no, it doesn't recognize him, which is stupid, because of course it would. Oh, I feel like that's an English line, though, for memory. No, that's from Japanese. Oh, really? Is it? Pretty sure. Oh, that's stupid. That's why it's all fuzzy. Uh, and then he looks through the window, and he's time-traveled as yeah. well somehow. So he realizes that he's come back on the same day he left. And but he hasn't come back on the same day he left. Because, oh no, he, 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 it was the same day he left, but it wasn't like his, he got teleported back in time. Mm. He's, like, it's, okay, sorry, it's not like Home Away From Home, where he, like, he disappeared and to then the time moment, went so yeah. slowly that he could come back and almost no time passed. So yep. he's just back yeah, and he, it happens to be the same day. He has time travel. He's actually time travel, and yep. so Takuya still exists yep. at home. Yeah. Takuya remembers that he overslept that day and his mum woke him up. And then he remembers how he was always fighting with his brother and how his father promised he'd go to soccer practice with him the next Sunday. You know what I forgot and what I love about what? all these time, I like about time loop stories mm-hmm. is that they always start on a day that is like notable for a small reason. Yeah. Oh, it's this person's birthday. So when you start the loop again, oh, it's the person's birthday. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I know the loop has started yeah, it's, again. It's so you can point it out and even though they start, yeah, it's, it's something that you can grasp onto. It's an anchor. Yeah. In the dub, his father promised him to play soccer with him on the weekend, not just come to his soccer practice. Taku wonders what would have happened if he hadn't gone to the digital world, and he imagines the birthday dinner. He starts crying, and then Huma Takuya runs past. Takuya says that if he stops him, everything can go back to the way it was before. Okay, so this is a weird moment, right? Mm-hmm. Because what this does is it shows that Takuya is such a coward that he not only can he not handle his own defeat, he needs to alter time so that he was never defeated in the first place. Yep. Woo! He is the ultimate coward. Yeah. It's actually impressive. Then he he, start, he chases after Takuya and he yells about how he shouldn't go. And Takuya says that he's going anyway. In the dub, Takuya comments on how the voice sounds like him. So in the time loop idea, uh-huh. did this happen in the first episode and we just didn't see it because of the camera? Maybe. Like, was this how he didn't die because of the truck? Yes. But I feel like he was in such a hurry he just didn't pay attention or he's just too stupid to... the monster who looked him in the face and said, don't go. Yep. Now, I will accept, in fact, the English change to this is something I adore because it's something I theorized in the middle of the Japanese is that whenever, whenever... Flame Mon speaks or whatever. Sakuya seems to kind of ignore him, all right? Yeah. Or he just says, oh, that was weird, moving on. Mm. And in the English, they just recognize it now while I'm speaking out loud. Because because it's the exact voice yeah. that he has, he thinks it's his own thoughts, yeah. which is really funny. I thought, Yeah, I thought that was funny. No, I... I, d- I did enjoy that. I did have a bit of a chuckle, like, oh, maybe Takuya's just thick. Also doesn't work that way, because your own voice doesn't sound like it does in your in your head. First of all... It's just a thought. First of all, like, the voice that you think with is different to the voice you speak with. Yeah. Because you can't shout with the voice in your head. You can't. Um, and then, um, like, like, you can't raise the volume of it. Uh, mm. Second, when you're speaking, like, the show we're doing right now, I don't sound like I think I sound like on the show when, it's, when we're playing it back. Yeah. It's much worse. Oh, yeah, I hate editing because I sound completely different. Like, I hate my voice normally, and then I hate it even more when I'm editing. Like, oh, my gosh. I love my voice in my head, but I know it doesn't I, sound like I think it does. I can tell you do. Yeah. 
Let's more into it with I love what I have to say, because mm. I have so much of it. Takuya seems a little bit shocked, but he seems to be more shocked about the truck, so I guess he just thought he, he imagined himself? Well, it wasn't himself, it was a monster. Yeah. Oh, he imagined hearing himself and imagined seeing Flamon. Flamon remembers how he was thinking about if he stops now, nothing will start. In the dub, he says he remembers, remembers being worried about missing out on something, and then mentions how all he would miss out on is hurting his friends. Duskmon shows up again, and in the dub, Flamon seems to know that he's not real. To be fair, he wouldn't have hurt his friends because they weren't his friends yet. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. He, he would have just gone on his merry life with his, you know, friends and his football and his brother. Uh, football! Flamon calls out to himself and wonders if he, could, he should stop himself. He jumps onto a train, and he looks in, and he sees a boy who looks like Koji, and an actual Koji. This is weird, because this is not explained. What do you think it is? I think that they've all been sent back in time. I think they're all doing stuff and they're all failing to change things. So other, so they're, they're going to have this like weird time loop adventure, which if this is what Frontier is, in fact, if like this is the arc, I don't think it will be. No, because no, it won't be because Takuya went took the train. Oh God, this is dumb. Um, I don't know. I was, a, a, I would be on board with a time loop adventure. Yeah. Alternatively, like... There is another Koji, like lookalike, who was Duskmon's partner who died. I don't know, it's really dumb. There's a l- No no, he he fell down the stairs. He never made it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's um I'm thinking it's Koji's twin brother. That or makes do, the most you, sense. Or do you just think it's something random? No, I think wait, Koji doesn't have siblings, does he? No. Nope. He said that. Crap, who is this guy? Oh, it's just it's um it's Ken. They look the same. So you think it's just Ken time travelling? You know how they all thought it was Ken from in Digimon Try? This is yeah. where he is. This is this is how where he's missing. <laughs> he teleported to another dimension and he's in Frontier. He was in Frontier the entire time. <laughs> oh, I don't understand. That the wacky adventures of Ken Oh, because he's friends with Rio and Rio was able to jump through Digimon series. Uh, Maybe it's Rio. It's Rio. Yeah, okay. It's uh, Ken and Rio's love child. So Flamon then notices that Takuya's up to the lift already. So he misses it, and then he sees not Koji miss the lift, and then Ko- like not Koji falls down the stairs and like dies. Pipe. He doesn't die. He just hurts himself. Yeah. Well, he, he looks pretty unconscious. He's a kid. Show he probably didn't die. And when he gets to the end, he says Koji. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he knows who he is. Whoa. But, more importantly, if he was Koji, he wouldn't say that. Mm. He wouldn't say his my, own name. Yeah, my, my last words will be my own name. <clears throat> yeah. Also, Koji in the lift gasps. I'm not sure it's, if it's because he saw this person fall down to his death or if he just gasped in general, but nah. I just found that weird. He just felt someone walking on his grave. Um, And I guess the rest of this episode is a bit weird because... Flamon like d- jumps down and is behind them during yeah. the entire conversation. Yeah, I'm not sure how he managed to like. Did they, did they show him go through like? Because I know they ju- he There's jumped the emergency the roof at the top. Oh, so yeah. he went through that. But yeah, how did they not notice that the emergency roof came off? No, they didn't notice it came off. They didn't notice that somebody dropped down behind them. And Flamon did not really try to be very quiet. He didn't say anything, but he was like, uh, mm. um, uh, mm. and he's making noises as he's moving. Mm. And then they have a whole conversation, and the worst part of this yep. is that, like, they f- they use old footage of the whole train station, which yeah. involves a long shot looking into the elevator, and you see Koji and Takuya and no flam on, because yeah. they're just using old stuff and they didn't want to edit it at all. I feel like they should have just edited it in. I feel like it would have looked better. I think it would have been better to plan this in advance and have a figure be in the background of that elevator and mm. have you as the audience be like, who was that? Yeah, like a shadowy figure. I'm like, ooh, spoopy, like wizard No, mod. just have it be something you didn't notice. Yeah. And then, like, if you ever look back, you're like, oh, he was there. Because time loop, that's awesome. Or, you know, when we have Takuya on the train looking nervous, we have, you know, we see a bit of, a, like, bit of red hair in the window. Like, the coolest bit of all time loop stuff is the, I can't believe this was, that thing that wasn't explained was always part of the time loop. That's the Prisoner of Azkaban, like, throwing stones through the window and stuff. Like, Mm. what the hell was that? Oh, it's unexplained. Oh, it was the time loop! Oh, yeah, that was clever. And, you know, when Hermione sees herself? Ah, That's the coolest! When she looks behind, she's, and you're like, well, what'd you say? And she says, I thought I saw, never mind. That best Harry Potter movie. No, that's the best, that's the best Harry Potter of all of them. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it is. Time travel! 
Yeah, I love the adventures of wacky tr- time travel. Oh, it makes it also makes no sense because there has to be a starting loop, which means they have to fail at some point. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's time travel, and time travel's sick. Anyway, so Flamon is about to stop Takuya, but he remembers Koji asking him why he's here. Then he remembers asking the others how they got on the train, and then an instrumental version of Fire plays in the original, and it's quite beautiful actually. And he remembers Bokemon telling him that he and the other children are the only ones who can save the digital world. And Flamon doesn't stop him, and he thinks what would happen if he was the only one not to go. In the dub, Flamon says he can't pretend that nothing happened because he's not the same person he used to be. Flamon tells Takuya to go and to run and to get on the train. Flamon then wants Takuya's run aboard the train. He says that he's wondering whether or not that was the right choice to let his past self go. Can I tell you a story? Yeah. Okay, uh, because I'm just thinking about it because of time travel. So the story goes like this. Uh, I was in high school. And mm-hmm. I had a friend who was into sci-fi. Um, and, uh, okay, so earlier that year, for my birthday, mm-hmm. he had not gotten me anything. But what he did, he goes, my birthday gift to you is you can automatically win one argument. Oh, what? You That's get, a great you present. Get, you get one thing where you can say you just win. And I can't bring it up anymore. And that was in February. And then skip forward now to August. It's been quite a few months. And we were in a long argument about time travel. We argued about this for like a week. And we're going back and forth. I would have used it straight away then. No, no, I had forgotten about it. Oh, okay. And we're going back and forth. And finally, after a week, and I feel like we were just totally moving. We're in the middle of a very heated argument. You know what? I'm calling it in. Argument's over. I've got this time travel totally works. And he's like, ah. Because he was really passionate about yeah. how it clearly wouldn't work. Yeah, that's cute. How old were you? Uh, this would have been year 10. That's cute. So I would have been, what, 15? Which friend is that? Ariel. Huh. The Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah. Who became a doctor. I mean, it's not Ariel. Yeah, also, yeah. We, we did get him Little Mermaid birthday cake. I'm so glad you did. Anyway, so the most important part, yeah, the episode. he remembers Bokemon and Nemon, who are the best. He should have just said, oh yeah, Bokemon and Nemon are there. I have to go. Oh yeah, of course. I need to see what comes out of that egg. Mm. Unless nothing happens. Maybe they be make, the godfather. They make an omelette. In the dub, yeah, Flamon tells him to follow his destiny. Duskmon shows up again, and Flamon says he won't run away because his friends are waiting. He punches Duskmon in the face. Surprise, and, it was a ghost! And he says that he, he won't lose to him. In the dub, he says he's not scared of him. The dark trailmon shows up. And the Trailmon asks, hey, aren't you the one that got scared and, go- and went home? I don't like this bit. Flamon said that he did, and he understands why he turned into this form that's neither human nor beast. In the dub, he said he turned in this form because he wasn't able to figure out why he did that, and he, you know, he turned into something that wasn't there because he wasn't didn't want to admit that Koji was right and what what he was doing in the digital world and he wasn't sure about that he just rationalizes it a lot and also makes no sense yeah it makes no sense that's why my explanation of what he said made no sense because it doesn't really make sense by saying oh I became this thing that wasn't sure because I wasn't sure about why I was there because Koji was right and I didn't want to admit that that's basically what it was <clears throat> also this, you can't use this neither human nor beast when it's just Digimon levels like yeah it's normal. Digimon le- well he doesn't know that the human beast distinction doesn't really exist but more importantly, what I hate about this uh-huh. is that the Doom Train was cool when it was just a Doom Train. It wasn't meant to be a redemption train. Yeah. Why would it be waiting for him if he doesn't... Only only chosen who have like let doubt creep into their hearts yeah. can get on. If he's re- got resolved now, he shouldn't be able to get on. He should have like the, hap- like the same train who took him there, or one of the other trains. That is the train that took him. We, he we, took him there initially the to, Doom the, to train? The, the, the real world. He should have said, okay, world. Doom Train, take me back. And the Doom Train says, you can't get on. Don't explain that. Just or say, maybe, you can't get on or, and leave. Or maybe the Doom Train's like, I don't know, light twin who just says, okay, only the <sighs> no. chosen who have redeemed themselves. You can't have a blessing train. You know what you could do? Here's the thing the writers would love because they have 50 episodes to fill. What? You get over there, the Doom Train goes, you know, he goes, let me on Doom Train. The Doom Train is like, no, you don't have yeah. the doubt in your heart anymore to get on. You don't have your ticket to ride, basically. I'm out of here. And it leaves. And there's no more trains. So now you have a, a little small Takuya arc of adventure to get back to the kids and alone. And he just walks along the train tracks. Yeah. I don't want that for 50 episodes. No, 50 episodes. Like two episodes of Takuya, like, with his own resolve. And he's thinking about what he likes about those guys. And you get to build up the other characters through his perspective of them. And that would be really interesting when he mm. gets back to them. And they've been doing stuff while he's gone. Mm. And they have had experiences, and Koji's become the leader, and there's all this stuff you could do with it. 
And instead of doing any of that, they just said, oh, yeah, back on the train. Because it's, it's we, easy. Because this was actually filler, it turns out. No. No, it isn't, but... I got really scared for a second. It's First little, the Bogle one episode, now this. It's a little this. bit. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a maybe. Takuya asks the trailmore to take him back, and he says, are you willing to throw the peaceful time with your family away? And Why would the train care? I don't know, because, well, I have thoughts The train about doesn't this. even know that happened! I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts later, in, in our discussion bit. So he says it'll be too late to regret later. Takuya gets on board and he thinks about his father and he wishes his brother happy birthday and he says sorry to his mum and dad. He thinks about how the other children are waiting and tells them to wait for him and to hang on until he gets there. The trailmon says that he's gotten over his doubts. Flamon runs through the carriage and becomes a Goonimon. The trailmon arrives and the Goonimon gets off. In the dub, the trailmon says, end of the line, or maybe not, you decide. That's crap. And then the episode ends and yeah... What do you think of this episode as someone who was new to Digimon? Okay, so in the first one there was a big fight which was lame. There was a character who was acting the wrong way. And then there was a really cool thing which said some cool stuff about the universe which is then undone by being a redemption train and not a doom train. Mm. So at the end of the day, it's okay. I Something I liked about episode 21 is that it kind of takes the trope how in Shonen the character's always able to defeat the bad guy because of friendship. And this episode kind of subverts that in the way that Takuya thinks that it works like that, and then he realizes that it doesn't, and Koji ends up getting injured. And I don't see many, especially in shonen anime or any piece of media in general, where they usually say, oh, but I have friends, so I can win, and then they win. But it didn't happen here. I think you underestimate the prevalence of hubris in these shows. That mm. happens a lot, actually, I think, where the character's like, yeah, we can totally do this, and they just can't. It's just usually the defeat's not quite as strong, but it does happen all the time. But it doesn't. It didn't go this down this predictable route that a lot of shonen anime goes down. And I thought that this was fairly predictable. This whole this whole bit. Oh, not that he goes back to the real world. Like someone who. Well, hasn't yes, seen that it. was out of left field, but that was only because of the big darkness thing making it like an easy plot point to shovel in. I mean, I I, I kind of liked, and I feel like. You know, Digimon doesn't really get praised for subverting the trope of like, oh, but friendships always prevail. And because then... they probably didn't do it first. I just feel like... Digimon... What was this, 2005? 2003, I think. Okay, fine. Well, a lot of anime maybe. had existed by then. I'm just saying that I think that it's nice when it actually subverts tropes, because it goes along with a lot of tropes. Like, as I said earlier, we have the hothead, then we have the lone wolf that the hothead is at ends with, then we have the, the big bloke who's kind of, like, good with machinery, and then we have the kid who's crying, and then we have the girl. Honestly, I think that, like, all of Naruto is based on, yeah, we have the power of friendship! Oh, it didn't work! Oh, okay. we have to th- We have to come up with something better. I've only seen, like, the first, like, 30 episodes episode of Naruto and they were the, like every second episode was the same so I stopped watching but episode 14 was really good yeah no there, there were some good episodes when he punched Haku in the face that was the best <laughs> that was the best thing that ever happened in anime how do you rate this episode <laughs> so as I said before it's a 5 until the doom train and then it's a 10 and then it takes a dip back down to like a 7 so I gave the first episode a 6 and the second one an 8 but I'm, I'm, I am I'm think 7 would be a good way to describe both the episodes okay what about the second episode like just by itself how would you rate it um I guess it doesn't have the, the coolest part of the whole thing was, was the big reveal part and I don't mm. think it's nearly as cool when you just walk in and he's been delivered to the train station so but it works as an episode even if it is just, uh, it is a five minute idea that's drawn out to 20 minutes. So let's give oh, it a yeah. seven. And it's filled, yeah, it's filled in with also a few recaps and Good. <laughs> flashbacks all day. And something interesting is that I think that it might have had even more flashbacks in the dub than in the original, but I might be wrong there. The problem with this return episode, and I think mm-hmm. we're about to go into a lot of this, but my initial thoughts on it is that when Ty could go back to a time where obviously there wasn't another Ty around, so it was just like when he legitimately went home, right? We, we have a discussion point on this. Can we, can we leave it for then, please? Uh, okay. I just wanted to give my initial impressions, because you've given a lot of thought into it. No, 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 but we'll discuss that, so it's, you know, it's fine, just a fine, non-sequitur. Fine, no, no. All right. How did this ep- both these episodes compare to what you thought in Ob- Obnoxious Synopsis? <sighs> I don't know. I didn't really make a lot of guesses. Um, uh, I get. Oh, you know what? The, the annoyance I felt about episode the first one. It, it is similar. What actually happened was very similar. When Koji says he used like half his power, he was playing with us. You go, why? Why would he ever do that? If Dustmon will instantly kill Abumon the moment he's not useful anymore, why would he play with the kids and not just kill them too? Yeah, I feel like he should have just sliced the kids in bits. I'm pretty sure he could have. It's totally not within his character, mm. as far as we can tell, to mess around. 
He seems very serious. Um, it made sense with Piedmon, who whose hubris undermined him because he wanted to have fun, and that entertainment factor was part of his character. Dosmon's a badass, like, oh, you're all dead, whatever. Why would he ever bother showing them that he's really strong, letting them get away, and then following them again? That's such a huge waste of time. Mm. Um, it is arguable we don't know what his actual motives are, but the ascribed motive to this action is to enjoy himself, which is stupid. Um, and... I don't know. Yeah, the reason for Tokyo going back home, honestly, I was totally wrong. It wasn't a lame reason. It became lame later, honestly. It did, but mm. there it is. Any other thoughts about your what your predictions were? Because you were like, you went too off the mark. I said the first one would be a five, which is dead accurate until the end, and I said mm. the second one was a four, which is way off. Yeah, that, that one's definitely a bit off. What was the major difference between the Japanese and the English version? Um, <clears throat> I think the reason he got on the Doom train, um, which was in the... Basically, in the Japanese, the train goes, if you, you know, chosen who have let doubt creep in their heart, who have, you know, whose purpose has been corrupted, are, can get on the train and go home. And he goes, yeah, that does sound like me. Mm. Like, it's a it's this terrible acceptance of what he has become mm. in light of everything that's happened. And the other, in the English, he goes, that's what happens to guys like me, I guess, which makes it really sound like people have made judgments of him. So now he's just accepting other people's judgments and it's like the world's against him and it makes him sound really whiny and crap. Yeah. See, what I noticed is in the first episode, the, how act- actively spiteful the kids were being towards Daku and saying, oh, what did I hear? Oh, it was just the wind. Instead of just discussing something completely without him being there, just, oh, do you think we can win? And Koji's just saying, oh, maybe we can't. And they're just sort of discussing the situation. Yeah, but it's not as jarring because there's already this weird ramping up of people not liking Takuya mm. in a way that they've never shown before. And so in the Japanese, it's sorry, in the English, it's not inventing that. We sometimes get a whiplash. I'm like, this is totally new for the English. No, they've just amplified it a bit. Also, in episode 22, there was a lot more added dialogue in the dub. Yeah, they always do that. And Pastor Kuya sort of responds to Flamon. And I don't know, I just thought that was a weird thing. But I don't know, I just... I felt that the additional lines was quite jarring, really, in the in episode 22, because it just sort of... It made it less emotional and put too much emphasis on the flashbacks, even though it was only, like... It was only 22 episodes ago. We can remember. You know what would have been really sweet? What? Is if in the first episode you'd actually see in Flame Mom push him out of the way of the truck and have yeah. the audience be like, who was that? What was yeah, that? Or just a shadow, as you said earlier. If we just <clears> saw, like, a shadow, or maybe, like, a little tuft of red, just, just, sort of, just enough just to say what was that and then you you realize later on i just feel like that would have been a nice addition but i don't know i feel like they would have had this episode planned by then the feeling of time loop should be puzzle pieces falling into place not someone taking pieces out and being like look it was a puzzle the whole time so now let's compare this episode to home away from home i rewatched home away from home only in english though because i was at work so i wanted to listen to it and so i've I've got a few bits of differences. Well, let me let me give you a f- my first impressions, yeah. if I can. Yeah. Um, I think I really liked the framing of Ty going back home a couple seconds after he'd left. Yeah. So that he can experience what it would be like to continue his life and just reflect on normality versus what he just came mm. from. He just got thrown into a big monkey black hole, right? And he has that moment. He gets to speak to his sister. He gets to hang out with Koromon and he sort of has to engage with the world with through this new lens of weirdness. Yeah. And I think that is a really interesting thing. Oh, yes, definitely. Whereas Takuya going back in time, while there is interesting stuff in the time loops time loop they didn't use that very well so all you're really left with is how does he how does he confront the world now but because he became a digimon it's so distanced from that it really he may as well not have gone back to the real world he may as well have just imagined the day again and had regrets in a voiceover Mm. because at the end of the day what was accomplished nothing no what what it would have been equally the same if the train had dumped him off at the elevator, he'd had a full flashback to just replay the first episode. Mm. Don't change anything. Just replay the whole first episode, cutting up stuff for time, I guess. And then uh, he gets there and he goes, oh no, I actually don't want to go into the elevator. Yeah. The only thing you're missing is the Duskmon ghost, which is actually really good. And you're missing the Koji twin, which is unexplained and probably important, but whatever. No, I I, I think that would have been worse, though. I feel like... It would have been worse, but yeah. it's actually very similar. Yeah, no, it is, it is very similar. And I feel like if they cut out a lot of this episode, they could have just probably slotted it in somewhere else. 
like in another episode, just say, oh, and here's what Takuya's is doing when he was sent off with the train. I don't know. <clears throat> so as I've got a few discussion points and I do want to go into them because I spent a lot of time actually compiling these notes. So first of all, the reason for coming to the real world. And it's not really explained in adventure. He just sort of like he wins the fight with Edamon and he's sucked into the the, the like the hole. But it's not explained why it takes him to the, the real world. Okay. So to be fair, you're going to say Takuya's reason we go to the real world is really good because I say it's better than well, nothing. I think that scene is really good. The problem is that he's sent there by the weird darkness attack that Dust One does. Yeah. And then if he just shows back up, you could argue that it was all a dream. Yeah. Because there's no there's no evidence that any of that happened. Actually, I I thought that it, there is a possibility that it's not so much actually happened, is that it's sort of maybe the train has... He, the train's actual job, like, he lied to you. The train's actual job is to show the path, like, show the way to lost chosen who have accepted this darkness or have been overcome with despair yeah, and Yeah, redemption train. Yeah. That but, sucks. And he, and it has shown him what it, like, shown him from the, like, the day that he left and he's not actually there. It's more like a hallucination. That's really uncool. <laughs> like, and I, I know, I, I sort of got the impression that that was possibly happening. Like, he wasn't actually there where, without a doubt, Tai Chi is in the real world. You cannot say that he's not. He yeah. he is there. However, his mum never says, "Hey, why were you talking on the phone when you were meant to be at camp?" Like that that, that that's a bit of a plot hole because you know he picks up the phone because uh, his mum's calling Kari to see if she's, she's okay. Yeah. And Ty says, "Mum." And his mum says, "Ty, is that you? What are you, what are you doing home? He shouldn't still be in at camp, even though they went sent back early. They weren't." What do you mean? That's mean she had an she had an appropriate reaction. Yeah, no, I mean later on in the show, she never says. So I heard your voice before you came back from camp. Um, because it never happened. Yeah, I mean, you could also argue that with all the dream, right? Like, does Kari remember him coming back? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she mentioned it. Oh, in that case. And also, we see the Digivice that's just lying on the floor. Her Digivice. So we see that. None of them see it. Yeah, I know. But I'm just... Uh, so <clears> it, it is, like, without a doubt that Ty has gone home, but it's not so sure if Deku is actually there. Anyway, so my point is that Taichi was sent back to the real world after a victory, Takuya was sent back after a loss, but at least the explanation for Takuya being sent back is sort of explained. Like, you know, he was he was so overcome with this loss that he was sent back home. And in Adventure, Taichi just kind of goes back home and is there. Like, he just falls into that hole and then he's just standing in a diver. Well, yeah, because it's magic. Mm. And then he sort of goes home because the plot decides it's time for him to go home as opposed to Takuya having an epiphany. So at the end of the episode in Adventure, Taichi realizes that he has to go home because the real world is in danger too. And he's seeing all these Digimon just pop up. No one's re- reacting to them except in the dub where it's saying that people are reporting monsters being seen. But they're like invisible yep. at this stage. And, you know, the whole fight is like, oh, they're there. They are causing damage to the street. And they're causing earthquakes, they're causing natural disasters. And we find out in the prologue, all the, all the weird things that were happening were happening because Digimon were there. And that's... that's, that's that that's, doesn't it, make a lot of sense. Like, how was there a big tidal wave of chocolate milk? Was there a chocolate was milk mon? It was mud. Was there a chocolate milk mon? It was cool. It was, they, were, they were having, like, places that are usually in drought flooded. And it was that was muddy. That also doesn't make sense. In the like, double how much water milk. would you need to create? It's like you have a Blastoise mon just sitting there, like, pumping hydro, yeah. p- hydro but, pump. Well, that was just all, always my impression there. But, so, yeah, the Digimon are without a doubt there. They're not visible, but they are causing damage. In Frontier, Duskmon is a figment of Takuya's imagination, basically, and isn't really affecting anyone but Flamon, and Flamon's not, like... he's not really there. Yeah, he's not, he's not really there. He's not causing any damage. And, yeah, Takuya realises that his friends need him, <clears throat> and that's why he goes back, instead of, you know, oh, the real world is in danger, too. The real world's fine in Frontier, like, yeah. we just sort of, we see it. it, it's fine, and, you know, he's going home to protect his friends and save the digital world, not because he has to save his sister and save the real world, it's fine. Well, the weirdest thing is just, like, that elevator takes you home. That elevator will always take you home. Yeah, it just sort and of And then it will take you back. Mm. It would be, it, this has the, it doesn't have the zero two problem because they don't just take it back and forth, but it is, it is still a zero two like thing with like, that's the way out. Yeah. It's just sort you of like, can always leave if you want. Look, it's the, it's the elevator of plot basically, but I'm just saying no, that I mean is, 
Tai Chi just sucked into the sky. Yeah. We've not never... explained why. Nothing like... He defeats Ogamon, yes, and Ogamon sent back, but I don't know why that affects Tai Chi when it shouldn't. Because it, it, Ogamon, you know, Ogamon floats up and he's like, bye, I'll, I'll see you in the, in the digital world. And then Tai's like, oh, I guess I'd better go too. So he, like, takes the sky as well. What I mean is that, like, Matt would never tell Tai, well, if you don't like it, just go home. Because they couldn't go home. Mm. But Koji's in a position where he can say, you just go home if you don't like it. Well, Which is so strange, because they could all just go home. Yeah, apparently. But, but they want to be there, and I think that's nice. And Orphanimon did give them the out of saying, yeah, you can go home now. And let's, now let's talk about what's making them stay. Basically, Hikari is making Taichi want to stay. And, you know, he's holding his hand and saying, you're staying now, right? And especially at the end, when Taichi's, you know, going off into the plot portal. The plotal. And Kari says in the dub, bye-bye, Tai. Don't forget about me. Like, she would think that he would forget about her, and that's that's heartbreaking. He's already been gone for, like, six months. Mm. Not that she knows that. She's only... He's only been gone for, like, six hours for Yeah, her. a couple of hours. In Frontier, Takuya just wanted to experience the possibility of having a life with his family. But... But he didn't think it through, because there was already another Takuya there, so he would not exist. Yeah, but also, not even that, he looks like a Digimon now, mm. and no one recognizes him. Yeah. So, where... Tai had a possibility where he has to make a decision, do I stay or do I go back? Yeah. Takuya did not have a real choice. Yeah, but he he didn't but he never actually mentioned in the whole episode, oh, but I'm a Digimon now and there's already a Takuya in the world. That was not brought up. I mean, he knows that there would be a Takuya that leaves, but at the same time Yeah, but like, he wanted to stop him from leaving. Yeah. But even if he that was for a different maybe that he thought, oh, there would be a whole time shenanigans and then he would disappear and then mm. Takuya would go. Stupid plan. Yeah. But either way. He didn't think it through. It's there are with Tai, you got to feel there was a legitimate decision, and with Takuya, there wasn't one. Oh, and yeah. More importantly, um, more importantly, I don't think we should ever support the main character doing a decision that is just pure cowardice. Mm. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, I got beaten once, so let's make sure that not only doesn't happen in the future, it never happened in the past either. Also, when they both think about wanting to go back to the digital world. Takuya's remembering these friends are in the digital world. Taichi doesn't actually think about his friends. He's just thinking about how the real world's in danger and how Hikari's wanting him to stay, but also he wants to protect Hikari because the real world's in danger. Those are reasonable priorities. Yeah, because he loves his sister. His sister is his world, and we find out later in Adventure. She almost died because of him, so mm. he's, he protects her. By the way, you can't fight the past. It's getting stronger every day. There's so much more of it all the time. Yeah, fair. However, what's, sim- what's the same is that both Taichi and Takuya want their own life back. And they spend a bit of time thinking about, I could just sit here and watch TV and eat my watermelon and go about my life. Let's be real, Takuya doesn't really think that. Takuya's like, I'm going to eat breakfast, not breakfast, uh, birthday dinner. No, Takuya wants that, but yeah. he cannot He cannot legitimately believe that will happen. Yeah, because he's a Digimon. Which weakens the whole thing. There's no reason for him to be a Digimon here, except that, I mean, A, to introduce this Digimon to you and have a little philosophical thing of, I can't believe I turned into a thing. So, and also just so that he can travel easier. Though actually, I really, really like how the kids want their own life back. It shows that they're, they're just kids. They, they don't really necessarily want to be humans. And Heroes. Yeah, heroes, sorry. They want to be humans. They, they want to be humans. They want to be human spirits, not be spirits. And, and as I mentioned earlier with the shonen anime and media in general about how friendship is what will save the day, another trope is that heroes usually accept that they're heroes and don't ever usually doubt themselves being heroes. They don't often say... I think say, you're very, very clearly wrong. They don't often say, oh, you know, I, why can't someone else do it? Like in Pokemon, we never had Ash say, why can't someone else do it? Or at least we because didn't. Because Pokemon's not a hero's journey. But Ash, you know, he saves the day, he beats the evil organizations. And in, in Digimon, the the main characters and well, Takuya and Taichi have moments where they just sort of say, can someone else do it? Can I just go back to my life? I want to be a kid. I want to sit at home and I want to do nothing. And I really like that about Digimon. Because okay. I don't feel like that happens much. Okay, A, I think it happens a lot more than you think. Not anything I've seen. Or well, the majority of things that I've seen, usually the hero is like, I am a hero and, you know, I'm. this is my life. So, as I was saying, I think A, it happens more than you think. And B, the times it doesn't happen, the stakes are so high and so clear mm-hmm. that, uh, that any individual in those situations 
couldn't think that because it's so obvious. Like if yep. you take if you take One Piece for example, the impetus of becoming the pirate king is so, first of all, it's a goal that you want for yourself. So yep. of course you can't be can someone else do it because it's something you want. Yeah. So at that point, the I want to go home and have a normal life doesn't exist. Even though, and also you couldn't have a normal life. Further, like if you take Pokemon for example, being the best at something is not something you want someone else to do. It's something you want to do. I know. But it was a personal. Yeah, quest. but with Pokemon, it's always the, you know fighting evil organizations. I'm pretty sure those are incidental. In the movies, he's like, I have to calm down this Pokemon or else he's going to destroy I don't know the world. The movies, man. Because no one else can do that, apparently. Yeah, all the Pokemon movies, turns out they're all the same. One of the big things about why he's fighting Team Rocket a lot and not saying someone else do it, like, call the police, is they stole Pikachu. Like, you want to get him back. Not, as, not always, though. They're not always after Pikachu. It's very, very commonly after Pikachu. Even though they can just run around Viridian Forest for an hour and find one. Um, but, like, a lot of the time they're really personal quests. Like, Naruto, when they steal Sasuke or whatever, and it's a, it's a teammate you want to get back. Okay, well, he has to do it because who else is going to? Everyone else is busy doing something else Mm. i have to do this that is something that happens a lot the fact that in digimon you have not been presented with a task of i have to do this it is important that i do this is usually because it's another world yep like and there and there are other questions there that they never really explore and it's sad that they don't explore that yeah that they never have this conversation with with bokum with bookmon and who says i said bookmon with beekmon there should be a conversation where they say, why do we have to do this? And Big One should be like, because we can't. Mm. And it is, somebody has to, because these are the bad things that happen. Now, that would be great. I, I would have really liked that, actually. Digicode is going missing, yeah? Yeah. But, all in all, no, what Digimon are actually, like, living in fear? All, all the, Digi- no, the Digimon are just living in towns, having marketplaces, being totally normal. The the Dark Masters were oppressive. Mm. They were really awful. But the and and Devimon was as well. Like you could see, he was scary. He was going mind controlling people. Besides, okay, look, they did remove Digicode from certain areas and stuff, which means which besides taking up like part of a landmass really just meant that they took like a bridge here and there they haven't really done anything so bad jerubimon specifically has done nothing i don't know yeah but i, f- I feel like that's another that's another camp can of worms which is basically they didn't actually write it as well as they could have and <laughs> clearly and like the bad guys aren't really a threat to anyone but the main characters and if you just sort of ignored what was happening to the main characters the bad guys aren't actually doing anything wrong, except for when they kidnapped the Shell Numamon. That was about and it. And I guess they took the Bergamon. Like, these are normal, moderate crimes that you'd get in any civilization. Mm. It would be like, you know what? They're Team Skull, honestly. Yeah. They're not bad guys. They're not an organization. Like, they appear to be an organization, but at the end of the day, they're an inconvenience, they're vandals. <laughs> Yeah. They steal a bus sign. They're talking about Cherubimon like he's Hitler. But at the end of the day, what's he done? He's been a bit scary in the distance. He's not the Emperor from Star Wars killing all the Jedi spoilers, apparently. But he's the Emperor from Star Wars sitting around, laughing maniacally, Talk- having minions. Talking about killing the Jedis. Yeah, and he, that's it. I have they Beacon is clearly scared of Trubimon, but we don't know why. He's just evil, right? Yeah, but he doesn't quite freeze whenever he says it like Gatchmon used oh, to. It's funny. Oh, I'm really I'm sad how short a time that took. I like that that they phased it out, like he phrased he for a little bit. Yeah. And then, then later on it was just cool. Mm. So funny. Also I wish Dokamon and um Musimon had been like that too. Yeah. No, that'd have been cute. Or any of the the Yatmon that they met. What about if even like I don't know Coachmon was like that? I love No no no, the evil ones wouldn't do We're it. We're talking about Atmon again by mistake. Yeah, it's We're, much better than to, this. We're meant to be talking about adventure. Yeah. Alright. So, where was I up to? So, yeah. You're um, praising Digimon for something it doesn't deserve? Oh, uh, I feel like it... I feel like it's it's fine. You're right, it is fine, I guess. So, I found that in, in my rewatch and comparison that Taichi was a lot more relatable in that he just wants, you know, he just wants to sit there. He's able to. He's sitting on the couch right now talking to his sister, eating watermelon with his sister and with, with his Koromon who duly lo- loves this watermelon. I duly, duly, duly. <laughs> Taichi, Adorable. Tai's a lot more of a human, generally. Yeah, and Takuya's actually not a human because he's a Digimon. I, I find... Pfft. 
I find that Adventure Kids are generally a lot more fleshed out as characters. Mm. Which is weird, because they have the same amount of episodes as everyone else, except yep. for Zero Two, but we don't count that. Adventure has a few more episodes than Front. I think Frontier only has, like, 52 episodes, I think. Let's keep in mind, the last two episodes of Adventure don't count. Yeah, yeah. I, I like them, though. So, also, Takuya's episode is still emotional at the end when he's thinking about leaving his family behind, and he thinks about his saving his friends. But it's inevitable. But he has to leave. Taichi's whole episode was pretty emotional. Yeah, as I said, especially with Kari at the end saying goodbye, and then her, she's holding onto his hand, because she doesn't want him to go. She misses her brother, even though he was only gone for a few hours, like, in her in her mind. She still doesn't want him to go. Well, so he probably told... Didn't he tell her about all the stuff he was doing? Oh, yeah, he, he mentioned the digital world. And she was like, that's, no, that's a big lie. No, she she says, well, of course I know Coromon. He's from DigiWorld. I've been to DigiWorld. But she's never been there. That's what she says in the dub. She says in the dub, oh, the I've dub been to DigiWorld. Because I watched the dub. Also, the So did du- I. I was there. The dub... No, I watched the I dub. I went to Digimon dub. <laughs> yep. Uh, anyway, and so in the dub of Home Away From Home... Uh, Ty keeps on saying Digiworld, not the Digiworld. Digiworld. Like, well, this. I maybe... forgot they used to call it Digiworld. That's yeah, not what it's called. It's so annoying. And yeah, so Duskmon isn't actually there. He's part of Taku's imagination. And in Adventure, the Digimon are actually there. Duskmon and the Digimon that appear in Adventure aren't seen by. Both aren't seen by anyone else. But the Digimon that appear in Adventure are actually causing damage. And both of the episodes that don't have any of the Digimon actually really talking. Which is fine. I like that. It's spooky. Then, well, yeah, as, as I said, the, when Taichi, is, Taichi leaves, he's kind of sucked back to the digital world. And it's for no reason. Oh, that sucks. Oh my god. Why would you do that to me? <laughs> With Takuya, Takuya had an epiphany and wanted to go back to the digital world. It wasn't really an epiphany. I feel like Adventure was better for feelings, as he could have just stayed home and been happy. And Frontier just sort of like, he didn't really have a choice. Yeah, not he at all. Had to, he had to go back. Because he couldn't stay here. Mm. But... I still feel like the Frontier episode was better explained. And, I mean, it's hard to say what's better because I feel like Adventure is better. But I'm worried that that's just me liking Adventure more. Adventure was better. You can have a second vote on that one. And, I don't know, because Frontier had some great ideas with this. It had, like, the Darkness Train. I feel like it could have been executed better. But the Adventure episode felt also a little bit the script said so, so now it has to be so. And... I don't know, it's it's hard to choose. I think Adventure's better, but Frontier does actually have a lot of good ideas in this episode, and I think Frontier in general, a lot of the times, has good ideas. Anyway, so, yeah, another thing that was in common is that they were both sent back to the day they left. However, Taichi was sent back exactly, and Takuya was sent back in time, and then there were two Takuyas. Also, speaking of two Takuyas, mm-hmm. Jay... Do you think that Izumi's imagination was foreshadowing for two tuku- tuku- Takuyas? No, because they never interacted. Also, Ooh, one was okay. a Digimon. Okay, good point. Well, they kind of interact a little bit. Not really. Also, the animation style changed in Adventure, and in Frontier was sort of the same. I noticed, however, in episode 21, they had a lot more shadows, and I guess it's because there was a the fire there, and there was like, you know, they were in the darkness, so that was meant to highlight the shadows a bit more, but there are a lot of shadows in episode 21. I thought that nobody could see them in darkness. Oh my gosh, why do you do this to me? It's fun. And on the surface, the answer's <laughs> Adventure, but after watching Adventure, it kind of actually made me doubt and made the decision a bit harder. But both have positives and both have negatives, but I oh don't know. It just it's it's just hard and I think after comparing these two episodes, I noticed also that Frontier kind of mirrors a lot of what Adventure did in the way that they were taken to the digital world and then the big bad is seen as a shadow and we, we saw that in Cherubimon, Devimon, Vamdemon. And Duskmon reminds me a lot of Devimon and Vamdemon in the way that when they're fighting against this, like, you know, quite dark looking thing, he's, he's just bodying them. It's almost like they have a recipe and oh, sh- yes. after Tamers, they were like, Ooh, we should probably go back to that recipe now. But We're zero, out of creativity. But at least Zero Two didn't follow this same sort of formula. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> and I know I know, I was comparing when we first started Frontier as how the progress went and oh, all of a sudden they can get to perfect rather quickly. And I compared that and that formula is different. But I'm just saying in general it just seems sort of similar. So do you have any other thoughts about comparing those I'm two? Well and truly done. Who do you think the strange we already, boy is? We, 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 do you want to talk anymore about him? What else have I got to say? You want me to rehash exactly what I said? Okay. And, okay, screenshot of the week. This week I chose the the shot that has Bokemon and Nemon standing in front of the digital world. They look like big heroes. 
And they are the two main characters of Frontier, and I love them. I picked Pokemon and Nemon behind the wall, being like, do something, please! Well, they're clearly the Neuteriamon as the, <laughs> the MVD of the Owl Screech the, of the they're Week. They're the best. They're not Terriamon, though. Uh, they, they try, they're almost Terrymon. No, they're not nearly so, like, so... They're not mean. They're never mean. I love Terrymon because he's mean. Um, no, they're great, though. Mm. Um, yeah, post... Oh, wait, no, Digimon designs. What do you think about Flamon? He's a Kingdom Hearts character. We already talked about yeah, that. But the, yeah, that was only... That's that's why I think you tried to skip the first one pack. Because like, there were no Digimon introduced there here. There were none, that's true. It was him as a non-human non-beast. Because yeah. we're the best. So your thought is he's a Kingdom Hearts character, then? Oh, boy, do I. Oakley, uh, you, you can read weekly poll since we're on to post one pat now, and I'll get up the results. So, well, actually, so this time we're talking about who made who, the most who delicious made the thing. best burger, who baked the better bizarre bergamon burger. Lots of bees. I'll, I'll get up the results. You, my read issue the says things. that Koji did. When it comes to burgers, they usually just eat the meat patty and ignore the rest of the burger. Koji's is mostly fruit, so they feel like uh, they could remove the buns, wash the fruit off, put it in a bowl, and it'd be decent. Uh, there's no way to salvage Takuya's burger because it's meat combined with a bunch of other stuff. Um, though if you just eat the meat patty and ignore the rest, that means you would like all the meat. I don't know, it's hard to hard to say. Um, Sharkmon says, uh, Koji, because the seafood burger with squid ink sauce looked disgusting, um, but the rainbow burger looked out of sight. Um, they also give Takuya credit for the burning spirit burger, super spicy, and his excited presentation was precious. They love how different Takuya and Koji are. And in brackets, ship. Um, Hiro Rolado says, they're a bit sad that we didn't put the actual best burger, the pizza That's burger. That's because that would have won, because that would, that would, I would eat that. I want a pizza burger no, right I now. I want Takuya's burger. Uh, in Good Japanese point. only, of course. Um, but yeah, they not, will not go... with the garlic and... No, no, it's anchovies, anchovies and peanut butter. And peanut butter right, yeah. The garlic was fine. Yeah, you the can garlic's have fine, that. yeah. Um, but they'll go with the one that's full of meaty goodness that Takuya made. Uh, SP says Takuya's burger seemed edible, and they like meat, so they vote for him. Uh, they think Koji's bizarre burger were um, were meant to show uh, that even as the cool loner guy, he isn't perfect, and he has some weird um, parts to him. Um, but because it's only about food, it doesn't take his overall coolness. Um, and Riku says that they're going to side with Koji on this one. They like the idea of fruit on a bun for some reason. <laughs> you can put fruit on bread. It'll just make it soggy bread. So for the results, that's why salad's terrible on burgers. So for the results, twenty we had 20 votes overall. Uh-huh. And so Takuya won with 15 votes. Yeah, he did. One of those is mine. <laughs> yeah, one of those is mine. Hey, we both voted this time. Woo. So, yeah. Um, and on With The Will... Turn no, on Gmail first, we have one for SP, who says... Uh, if it weren't for Zero Two or Frontier, Atmon wouldn't exist and wouldn't be as good because it's uh, making great use of all previous elements. That might be the case, but I mean, if a creator came up with these things, they could come up with them again later. I know, but I feel like they've been tested at least with Frontier, so they're able to see, hey, what worked in this show? What didn't work in this show? I guess, but you have to imagine as well that if Zero Two didn't exist and Frontier didn't exist, maybe something better would exist in their place to give better ideas. Yeah, Who knows? Fair. They really liked how the kids jumped straight through the beast. Um, to fight um, Petaldramon and got serious. You're right, they should jump straight to Beast, not go back to Human to fight Dustmon. That I'm makes just, no sense. I, know, I think that's, you know, it's strategic. It's saying, okay, you're faster as this and we need to be faster right now. But not all of them. Only some of them went to Human. Yes, because Bolgmon and Korikakumon are both rather slow. But they're all rather slow. That's why Vertramon had to turn back into Agnimon to chase mm. um, Grotomon around. Yeah. So that makes no sense. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, it seems that Evil Digimon are stronger in Frontier uh, when Wolfmon and Dustmon fight. Adventure, it was the opposite, where I guess the good Digimon are generally stronger, as long as they're of the same level, which I'm not sure is true because of the Dark Masters. Like, Piedmon beat everybody, um, and it it's just, the, it's just the angel strength that worked out. But, I don't know, it's... It does very much seem like the bad guys are often stronger than them. But the strength ranges are really, really broad. Like, um, Mianumon... Not Mianumon. Crap. Um, Ranamon is their evolved squid form. <laughs> Talking about Atmon again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, its evolved squid form is the same strength as, um, whatever, Birdmon. Not not Bird Beastmon. Um, they're, they're the same, but at the same time, like, Duskmon is infinitely stronger oh, than yes. her. Oh, yes, yeah. Even though he's a human level. It's, it's nonsense, but whatever. 
Um, the fight between Takuya and Koji was interesting because both sides had valid points. Um, it was better than Tai and Yamato's fights. And honestly, yeah, this fight was good. The problem with it was that it came out of nowhere. Yep. And I always, yeah, Tai and Matt's fights suck because Matt's always wrong, except in except maybe in Try. Maybe in Try he's okay. But most of the time, Matt's just plainly wrong. And now, in Frontier, I think that usually Takuya would be fine, but in this, in that episode, he's been given a new personality where he's wrong. So, mm. of course, Koji sounds more reasonable. And finally, Bergamon episode was filler, <laughs> um, but it's Hank Burger Helper, um, but it at least gave good moments to the weaker trio, and that's fair enough. And with the will, Jay Ukyo says, it's a shame that the phrase life hack didn't exist when Frontier was getting dubbed. It would have been perfect um, to convey Arbamon's gimmick. <laughs> oh my god, if everybody we turn the camera he's like life hack I would love that I, I love the phrase life hack and I agree with I like Jay, it when Jay it's Ukyo. misused I feel like it it doesn't have this dif- it has a different weight from advice like mm. life hack is just you know it's, it's a life hack it's not just advice it's a life hack life hack if you never want to buy tomatoes ever again if you never want to buy them from a store ever again don't when buy you get them a, when you get a tomato take a slice from the tomato with the seeds in it and put it in some dirt <laughs> It's like a half life hack. <laughs> yeah, it's just planting seeds. Um, advice doesn't carry the same slang charm as life hack. God, that would be really funny. I like that. No, that would have been solid. Chakmon says that they love episode 19, which I don't remember which one that is. Exactly. That was the Bergamon episode. Uh, Junpei's the yucky soba episode. burger looks delicious, and Takuya and Koji's burger battle was hilarious. When Chakmon gets to. Chakmon says that when Chakmon gets to scan the Digicode, the Camellia Mons uh, turn into Armadi Mons. I we did, haven't even mentioned I did, that. I did not. I didn't. I. I did, forgot. I noticed it. I just, yeah, we totally forgot to mention it. Yeah. It was important. Because I've, I've mentioned every other time, like, oh, look, it's the armor revolution of this. No, no, yeah. And they asked me if that's the first time we ever see this one with scanning. And yes. no. I thought the Wizardmon become... turned back into candles. Oh, yeah, but we saw the Wizardmon become the candles before. And same with the Mushmon becoming Woodmon. Yeah, we saw but, them de evolve. But this is the first time we didn't see them evolve first. But we do know that you can devolve dudes by scanning them. That does happen. Yes. Um,. Okay, liking they like Albumon and Pedalmon in the rewatch of Frontier. Episode twenty was good, and we got to see a field advantage. Um, and they're enjoying uh, the flow of Legendary Warrior stuff. Oh, I I didn't realize how much I loved Albumon and Pedalmon until I was watching this time. Just like I I love them both. I love I love Albumon's like life hacks. I love it so much. They also say that the Bergamon episode would have been funnier if Mercurymon was the villain in that episode because instead of Pedalmon, especially in the English to see Mercurymon go crazy for hamburgers would have been totally, uh, you know, sort of out of character for him and really funny. That's that's a risk, though. If you want him to be taken seriously, like, Pedaldramon is inherently a comedic character because Arbamon's so strange, mm. which so it's okay for him to have this weird burger slot. If Mercurymon is meant to be serious and meant to be, like, a treasonous guy you're meant to sort of take seriously, mm. um, having him in this weird filler episode where he should have been beaten doesn't make any sense you can forgive the fact that kids didn't beat Pedalmon in this episode when they just do it next episode yep so who knows Wildman 64 says they enjoyed episode 19 more than 18 in terms of filler but we didn't need two filler episodes in a row but hey it's 50 episodes a season of course you do I, I, I agree the uh the Bergamon episode was probably the best filler I've ever seen in Frontier so far, but I don't think there's many filler episodes in Frontier, and we've only seen a couple so far. There's not been a ton, but honestly, like, Frontier is so slow that it feels like there's lots of filler anyway. Yeah, because it's got bad plot. Um, and episode 20 didn't have much going on, even though it wasn't filler. It was sad how Arpamon died. Uh, it did give Duskmon something. That's good enough. This is this is wrestling booking, right? It's like, uh, you go out on your back, you're, you're gonna retire Arpamon, we'll put over the new guy. Mm. The new big heel. Um, on Twitter, Smile Wolf, he says, the entire time in the last episode, uh, they thought cicadas were going on outside their windows until May <laughs> said that it was coming outside of ours. It was on the recording. Um, I was worried that would annoy people. There were none tonight, though. Uh, Zane says, Jay, you can cut hard-boiled eggs in slices and put them in your burger. It's good. I usually have a, like, Did a... Did I ever talk about that? Yeah, I think, I think you said it was weird that he was putting eggs in burger, but I always have, like... Oh, I hard, have, like... no, the hard-boiled eggs, how would you use them? I yeah. have, like, a... I usually have a fried egg in my burger, but no, I'll, I'll try hard-boiled eggs sometime. That sounds good. I'll, I'll, 
I'll give that a go, Zane. Yeah, AJ, you, make, make me I'm burger. Not, I'm not doing that. Um, also, and what you do usually is, is you do it for Friday. What we do is we get the meat patty and we make a big one and then you cut a hole in the center of it and you crack the egg into that. So it like, it cooks in, in the ring that you it's made the in the meat. It's, it's awesome. It's you the best. Try it. It it's does... the best. Everyone try that. Right? If you eat meat, try that. If you, if you don't eat meat, get like a veggie patty or something and like, yeah, you make a hole with like a glass or something. It's really good. Uh, if... If it's, people... it's, it is entirely bones. It's so bones. It's, oh my gosh, if so bones. People, what's bones? Bones, you know, oh man, he dog. You Don't know, say bones. that about food. No, bones. When you, know, you say bones about food, that means you it's know, good. No, look, dude, if something's really good, it's bones. <laughs> You've never used this phrase in your dude, life. Dude, it's bones. Dude, it's, um, it's totally like If people want me to talk about recipes and stuff, hit me up on Patreon, eh? No, no, no. Um... <laughs> And they also say, um, also, why do they make a big deal of Tomoki adding onions? Thinly chopped onions can really uh, add to the taste of a patty. Well, what they're trying to say, I guess, is that he accidentally made them much better. Mm. And they couldn't think of anything but just, like, him really using an ingredient. And I'm assuming that they just picked a random ingredient that is in a Lotteria burger. (laughs) Mm. Right, I don't remember them being in them when I when we went there, but I think I picked a really simple. I just had I should have eaten a burger from Lotteria. I just felt like having. I was like, I don't want to have burgers in Japan. I'll have this smoothie instead. Yeah, you should have had food. I don't know what was what was. I ate lots of. I I I wasn't hungry. You weren't. You didn't have to pay for. All right. Bad. I I wanted to eat real food. On Tumblr, we had an anonymous who says that they really liked the fight scenes and how Shutamon and Vertramon combined their power. That was really good. Um, and how all of the children worked together in the Petaldramon fight Mm. and. Than the Dust One fight. Well, the Dust One fight is not nearly as cool. Um, it wasn't their fault. Dust One is so strong. Fair it enough. Kind of is. They should have been better. <laughs> it would have been nice if Fairymon got to scan some chameleon. Mon- oh no, that's that's cheap. Don't. They, no, they should have all been at because all three. They should have had them, a scan at some point. All the three of them should have. Uh, it was touching the uh, the way the kids encouraged um, Beakmon to write about the dark area. That was a good moment. I don't feel like we said how good that moment was. But they're also like, yeah, write about me. So like, it's partly, yeah, you should write. That's a really cute yeah. thing. And also like, I want to be the yeah, center of attention. I am uncomfortable. Me and not about me. Uh, a second anonymon. Oh, you could be the same one. You don't know. Uh, it's but they, an anonymon. It's probably a different one though. They say that uh, they think that past seasons also had the mooks. Oh yeah, mooks. Mooks is the thing. Had the mooks um, called all their Digimon, like, ma, the, the Digimon masters, like, Sama. Uh, like, the Devimon Sama, Edamon Sama. I think Edamon Sama sounds really familiar. Yeah, I feel like it probably was Piedmon used. Sama. I just have bad memory. But, but Piedmon didn't really have mooks, did he? I don't think Piedmon was called Piedmon Sama, but, like... I, because it, he, didn't have, he didn't have goons. He had the other three um, Dark Masters. And he generally worked alone, I think. Mm. He had... His only Lady goon Devimon. was Lady Devimon. And she... I don't think called it. Oh, her. no, maybe she did. Oh, she maybe. And, yeah, Vandimon Sama was probably a thing that happened as well. Devimon Sama, probably, and Edamon Sama, probably with the Garzimon, yeah. So, I just... I just missed that. So, whoops... <laughs> Edamon Sama sounds really familiar. Yeah, because he had all the Gazimon follow him around. He would be, de- he would demand. I think he called himself Edamon Sama. Let's be real. Yeah. All right, everybody, join us for the next episode of Saga of Tanya the Evil. Suck it, Takuya. I hate that title and everything about it. Or feel the power of Digimon, Takuya's full body strategy. <laughs> Okay, what is he, a masseuse? Yes. Um, And alone, but never alone. Or confrontation, Volcamon, Junpei's battle with his past. Maybe (sighs) maybe we get some character development. For Wiggly Wonders, I'm going to recommend, and I don't usually do this, but I'm going to recommend a band. Yeah, because I know music. So I'm going to recommend the band No Doubt. And they, if you, if you don't know, the singer is actually Gwen Stefani. But this is before Gwen Stefani, like, launched her solo career. So this is old. It's old it's quite bones. old. It's old as bones. <laughs> no, it's bones! come on! And anyway, so, yeah, I just rediscovered this on Pandora. And I previously only really knew one song, which was It Is My Life. But they do a bunch of other cool songs, like Just a Girl and Spiderwebs. It's, it's pretty bones, so if you're looking for some music... I found it actually found it on uh, the Liz Fair radio on Pandora. So li- the Liz Fair radio has Liz Fair, Lily Allen, and No Doubt. It has angry girl music. It's a genre. It's my favorite genre of music, angry girl music. It's like uh, whiny white boy music, but it's it's good. Mm. It's coming from someone who loves whiny white boy music. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah, No Doubt is good. What about you? What do you like? I bought Kingdom Death Monster like a crazy person. Don't tell people to spend $1,000. I'm not telling you to spend $1,000. I'm telling you to find someone who did spend it or alternatively buy, um, you can get, uh, it's called like Tabletop Simulator on a PC Mm -hmm. and then there's a mod for that where you can play this game. This game is awesome. It's, uh, primarily is a monster fighting game where you all work as a team to fight a monster who is powered by an AI deck which tells him what he's going to do uh-huh. and when you do damage to the monster um, which can be anything between like a, a lion with weird human hands to like a phoenix to like a dung beetle knight who's rolling around a giant ball trying to crush you all or mm-hmm. a dragon king and they have these AI decks that tell them what to do and you go around and you try to damage them and it's really sweet mm. but then like you're also kind of playing a campaign where between all of, like these monster hunts, you have a settlement you're trying to build and try not to die. It's really cool. God, it was expensive. That well, sounds cool. I mean, it's really expensive because I bought all 12 of the first wave expansions with it. But I'm really looking forward to playing it and I'm really looking forward to putting it all together. And oh my God, it looks awesome. Look up Let's Plays of it and stuff. Mm. Um, so- Beasts of Water were a good one. Yeah, you're a nerd. So stay tuned after the outro for the final chapter of the fanfic before I continue writing it. And remember, we have the survey. So if you want to have your say about how the continuation of the fanfic will be handled, please do the thing. Also, there are parts about Lane in the survey. So if you do have any thoughts about how we're going to cover Lane, that there's the survey is also for that. So the link dump is linked in the description. You can find our screenshots of the week and our weekly wonders that are linked in the description as well. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintranslationmon at gmail.com. Or you can comment on this episode or message us on SoundCloud. You can follow us on at Translationmon on Twitter. And you can find us on Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook and YouTube. We have a discussion thread on With The Will and a Reddit thread in the Digimon subreddit. And we'd really appreciate it if you were to review us on iTunes and or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to the podcast right now. We now also have a website and you can vote in our two weekly polls for this week, which is Home Away From Home or Home Again to Kuya Returns. And should we cover Lane in English to hear Jury's VA or should we cover Japanese? We're not covering in both. The DVD that I bought has dual audio, which is pretty cool. We're not covering in both because we'll die. We're also not watching the first episode, then the first and second, then the first, second and third, then the first, second, third and fourth. I will. And doing that strategy. That is insane. I will because I'm... It takes like 200 and something hours. I'm terrible at paying attention and Lane is hard to cover. You don't know that yet. I've heard from smarter people than me. Just take notes. Okay. Would you rather watch... Would you rather watch 200 more hours of the show or take notes? We'll see. We'll see how we go. You can donate to our Patreon, which is linked in the description, from as little as a dollar a month. A dollar a month gets you access to our listener Slack chat group, but higher levels get you exclusive notes, information, early and unedited episode recordings, the ability to suggest discussion topics, Skype calls with May and Jay, and more. And we're really close to our next Patreon milestone, which will allow us to increase the quality of all the content that we provide. Speaking of really close, just for perpetuity and my own... I was just want to say it on air. I'm like two hours of good work away from finishing my first novel. Yay, which Jay's been talking about in the Slack chat group. Also, we just started the uh, the roleplay in our in our Slack chat group, which is the Tamer Sona self insert one. And it's no really one's good. invited me, so I'm not in it. Because you didn't you didn't join the, the the channel. How can I join the channel if I'm not invited to it? You don't have to be. It's like the the roleplay channel. It's just it's in Slack. You just I haven't seen it. You just. You can just join any channel. I'm willingly blind until someone invites me. Just don't join No Jays Allowed. I don't show up to things that no, that I don't get invited to. There was there were houses that, that my friends were at, and they're having events all the time. I'm like, dude, when am I getting invited? They're like, everyone's invited. I'm like, no, no, no. You have to invite me. Yeah, I'm okay. like a vampire. I'll, I'll I can't you. get through I'll, the I'll door. Add you, I'll add you right now. Okay. Um, and thank you to our Patreon supporters, Sam Krieger, who has a podcast called The Moncast, which talks about Pokemon and Digimon, Stevie, who is also Stevie on YouTube, and you can find the link to that channel in the description, Wu Ching Long, who you can find at twitch.tv forward slash Wu Ching Long, Metal Mamemon, Joe, Anime Guy, who is Anime Guy Kurosaki, and the number one on YouTube, Chuckmon, Ishbal Bamba, Hiro Olato, who is Hiro Olato at, on Twitter, Jason Morosky, uh, Ryuchi, who is Frost Mirajig on Archive of Our Own. Stephen Reeves, who is at Wildlink64 on Twitter. Kaido Washi, Mac, Noam, Riku. Red and Garen from Breakfast with Digimon, which is another Digimon podcast, which you can find on SoundCloud. Chisai, who you can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr. Corey, Kyle, the Lady Bugman, whose anime blog you can read at baguburagu.wordpress.com. Small Wolfie, who's on Topastic as Small Wolfie and has a comic there called Eden of Melancholy. Lupin, and Tom. 
You can also make a one off donation on PayPal, which you found in the description. It's paypal.me slash Ergemon. Make sure to listen to the podcast, and we'll see you guys next time. But join us after the outro music for fanfic time. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Are you going to say goodbye? To pe- just in case I, people I thought are- we were going to. Yeah, but what, what are people doing? A bye if you're not going to join us, I guess. Bye. All right, reading time. Chapter 9, what is it called? <clears throat> Chapter 9, The Wind Rillage. Hey, that is spelled... That could be an R. Okay, you're right. It could, it uh, could be an R. I'm, just, I'm having R. fun. Chapter 9, Wind Village. They arrived sooner than they thought. Vimon jumped off Holsemon, and they landed. We're here! Maisie jumped off Hakimon, and Holsemon de-digivolved to Hawkmon. Why do you have to write in terrible handwriting? Why do you have to be taken there? Here? Here? Here. Maisie asked as she adjusted her goggles. I thought that said squished. <laughs> because I can op... I don't know. I can't do Vimon's voice. Davis, because I can open up the boulder of wind, which is where the human spirit of wind is. Vagmon answered. Cool. How do you open it? Hawkman asked, quite intrigued. <laughs> Jeez, all right, that's spelling. <laughs> In the human spirit of wand, Vimon's eyes tuned cold and she began to tremble. She turned around with her back, fawny wholesome on, and Maisie. She opened her mouth and said, I honestly have no idea. Hawkman was stunned. Well, you'll find out soon enough, right, Vimon? Maisie asked. Vimon nodded. <laughs> I guess. She said. Hawkmon laughed. Idiot. Maisie smiled. Shadow Blaster! A loud Vori yelled. Whoa. Maisie yelled. What was that? It's Shadow Gururumon. Hawkmon yelled. David ride on Shadow's back. We need to find the... We need to find the human spirit of wind. David yelled at Shadow as Shadow nodded. David looked down and saw Vimon. The one who can release the wind spirit. Dark howling blaster! Shadow yelled as a leam of light emitted from the Digimon's mouth. Vimon got hit and Maisie fumbled around in her pocket for her D3. It tuned in her hands as she lifted it. Digi armor energize. Hawkmon armor digivolve too. Vimon armor digivolve too. Why can she armor digivolve Vimon now? Because she can. She did in the last. Shadows last of Patamon and Jamon. Wait, Patamon? That's not right. That's what it says. Oh, I'm not. Okay, I'm using different. Holy Angemon and Seraphimon spun around Hawkmon as shadows of Ogumon, Greymon, Metal Gurumon, so Metal Greymon and War Greymon spun around Vimon. Moosemon, the Guardian of Hope. Flamedramon, the fire of courage. Fire of fists. Flamedramon said. Horn blade. Moosemon said. The attacks joined together. Both the Digimon yelled. Fire horn strike. With a Y. What? That's an R, but it looks like a Y. I see where you get that. You continue. Um, Shadow jumped in the air and left us inside the attack, covering itself in fire. David was standing off to the side, unclaimed his Digivice from his belt. He blipped around on the black Digivice's buttons and it began to glow. It became the Digimon Virtual Net. <laughs> oh, pet. Virtual pet. Uh, he then blipped around on on that and it began glue back and blue glow. I finally discovered how to digivolve to ultimate. David yelled in Victor. She, a shadow leapt out of the fire. Shadow, thank you. You can now digivolve to Shadow Way Garurumon. David began to press more buttons on his Digimon Virtual Pet. A Skull Gabumon ran out of the bush. 
Shadow Guru. Wait, wait, who? What? Shadow Gururamon. Shadow yelled. Skull Gabumon? The Skull Gabumon yelled. DNA Digivolve. Where did this come he from? He yelled. He's yelling his own name. Uh, they yelled at the same time. A blinding light flashed. Maisie realized what was going on, and the Digimon that these two Digimon will make be uh, will make will be out of control, and that her human spirit, Vmon's and Hawkmon's armor form, would have to purify. She doesn't have a spirit yet. Um, Skullwagoramon. The new Digimon yelled. David looked at the new Digimon in disbelief. It was supposed to be Shadow Gururamon. And thus endeth the story. Wow. I, <laughs> so did I, they fuse? The DNA Digivolved, apparently. Um, I, I I guess I have to continue from that at some point. So do the survey, I guess? Wow, I couldn't write when I was 12. What do you think about my writing from when What's I was 12? What's important to me is who was controlling the Skull Garbumon. He was. Wait, <laughs> the Skull Garbumon just He up. was surprised. It was the script. Well, no, so I think there was another dude in the in the bu- in the bushes whose heart was synchronized Look, with David's. I clearly needed to I don't know, I see, love, see some therapy. I love the shadow, they, that they like... I, he's like, I'm about to evolve, and Skull Garbumon's like, Skull Garbumon! I clearly had no I'm idea. I'm here now! I clearly had no idea when I was 12. Also, my question is, why has it become the Digimon Virtual Pet to DNA Digivolve? I don't know! That was random. I think I just wanted the Digimon Virtual Pet to I be I like there. that he was blooping around on it. No, it was blipping. It was blipping. I don't know. So, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm no, so sorry. No, it's great. It's been good. It's it's a money maker. What, what have I released to the world? This is cash money right here. So hopefully you, you all enjoyed that. If not, I'm sorry. My favorite part about this is that we you released the scans of this. Yeah. Like a year no, and a half No one ago, reacted to it. And no one read it. Like everyone was like, ha that's a thing that exists. And no one bothered to read it. That's why everyone's listening now and being like, whoa. Yeah, so. <laughs> this yeah, is bad. We, we released the scans of this. And I it took a long time to scan because that, it, it was, it's in as quite a small book, but it's still 83 pages long. It's 83 pages of my life of re- write, re- writing that, apparently. Um, so, yeah, that, that, so it took me a while to scan, and then no one read it. And I was like, maybe it's just not that funny. And no, apparently it is funny, but everyone just wants to listen to it. So We struggle. I'm going to be continuing that, so if you want to me to try to emulate my 12-year-old writing ability, then I can do that. If you want me to legitimately write it, I can do that, depending on what wins. I can write it starting from immediately after... We just finished reading, or it can be as my age now, or it can be a few years later. Just do the survey thingy. Um, we can have Jay in the story if it's continuing from this <gasps> age now. I can write you as a character, yeah! either terribly or well written. Terribly, depend- depending on how people vote in the survey. We also have the lane questions if you're interested. But yeah, and sometime I'm going to compile these nine parts into an episode. And if you're listening to that, then please enjoy. Um, if you're not listening to that and you listen to episode 96, please enjoy. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.